A beautiful night in the valley, and just like things were heating up in the desert, they are getting hot in here inside GCU Arena. That's right, we're going streaky. The Lopes riding the longest win streak of the season, and tonight they hope to get their fourth straight win over Utah Valley Wolverines visiting tonight. It's also Thunder's birthday, so he's hoping, of course, for a gift of the W. A lot of other team mascots, local team mascots, in attendance tonight for the game. And, of course, the Havocs are in the house as GCU gets ready to take the floor just a few moments behind us. We're counting you down to tip off as I welcome you, Kate Longworth, here to the Lopes pregame show coming at you live here on Fox 10 Extra. Well, as I mentioned, it was quite the complete game for the Lopes on Thursday night as they scored the victory over Seattle University. They really brought a balanced attack with five Lopes players scoring in double digits. But it's defense that Dan Marley wants this team to hang its hat on. And they did go out there and win the rebounding battle with, U with Seattle University. 47-31 out rebounding the team. Not only winning that battle, but also the bragging rights when it comes to the standings. New Mexico State, no surprise there, perfect 5-0 record when it comes to conference play. They've now won 20 straight in WAC play. Meanwhile, Cal Baptist, Cal State Bakersfield, the Lopes saw them earlier this season. They did fall to them, and both of them tied in that second spot with 4-1 and one record. But the, what you want to zero in on is on GCU right there with a 3-2 and two record. And tonight, they can keep making things happen as they go up against Utah Valley to separate themselves from the competition. And now we bring in our broadcasting team. I'm happy to see you, Barry, but I must say, Scott Williams, welcome back. It's great to have you along for our pregame show and all the action tonight. Thank you, Katie. It's good to be back with you guys. Definitely, and why not? They're riding a three-game winning streak. They improved to three and two. They're moving up the whack. Scott with a big, big three-point victory over Seattle. Well, they were fantastic defensively, like Kate mentioned. They were all out hustle all over the floor. Really, really good job holding the Red Hawks to just 40% shooting on the game. I love the fact that they crashed that glass, a yeah. plus 16 on the glass. The bench mob got involved for 23 big points. Everybody that played more than a minute, six points and four rebounds. That doesn't Not happen bad. very often in any college basketball game. Well, one guy that uh, we've talked a lot about is Carlos Johnson. He picked up a big 1,000 career point in the victory against Seattle University. And boy, was he strong down the stretch. Yeah, I was real happy for Lowe's because he played like a man possessed. Yeah. Not only has he been a difference maker this year, he's really turned into a leader out there on the floor. The way he sets a tone with his aggressive play, going hard to the basket, drives, post ups. Uh, really not afraid to mix it up inside, getting his teammate, the crowd fired up. 17 big points, nine rebounds, and uh, he had ice water in his veins down the stretch, and he really willed himself with the team to a big, big win. Another guy got into some foul trouble, but withstood it with four personal fouls, Alessandro Labor. The big fella has learned to play under control out there on the floor, and I love the fact that he can mix up the outside shot and then go inside as well. He's got great footwork and patience, left shoulder turn, right hand hook, and then when they play him too hard on that side, come back and just shoot your left hand on him. So he is really cool and cool. understand angles and how his teammates can find him on the floor offensively. He's a big weapon for Dan Marley and the coaching staff. Plus 14 on the night was Labor, plus five for five from the line. Lorenzo Jenkins, you mentioned the bench points. Isaiah Brown had 10 and Doobie had 13. Yeah, Doobie Doobie Doo, and he does really nice things coming off with that pine. I like his energy that he brings to a ball game, his ability to be able to score on that block or stroke it from the outside. He's good defensively, allows him a lot of switching, and he's not afraid to take it in there, and he finishes with strength, contact, and concentration. Big, big night for Lorenzo Jenkins, 13 points, six rebounds, five of six from the free throw line. But you touched on it, all seven players who played more than a minute recorded at least six points, four big boards. Yeah, it, it, really a team effort, and that's what you like to see. Yeah, non-conference didn't go so good, but conference, they are really starting to drive and find their group. Utah Valley comes in, first year head coach Mark Madsen, the former NBA player with the LA Lakers, stand out at Stanford. They came out of the gates on fire, three and one. Since they're there, five and 12. They stand at two and four overall in the conference, and their leading scorer and rebounder, six seven guard Isaiah White. Six seven guard, that's right, leading this basketball club. Uh, 
He is absolutely fantastic inside. He can shoot the ball a little bit from the outside, 20% from behind the arc, so you can't sleep on him. What he likes to do is damage on the offensive glass and attack him with tries and post-ups. It's going to take a, a lope and a half to make sure they get this <laughs> fella under control tonight. 13 points and an overtime loss at Bakersfield, but he had a career-high 18 rebounds for the Wolverines. Well, that'll set things up down here courtside. We'll send it back up to you, Kate. Well, guys, we know the two of you, you're quite the dynamic duo, but we have been talking about what the Lopes can bring on the court with some of their leaders step up, and I think we're seeing that, especially with this conference action. Both Carlos and Labor going out there on Thursday night with 17 and 16 points, respectively. And, Scott, I just turned it to you and asked what or how dangerous, rather, can this team be if those two guys are stepping into that leadership role that Dan Marley's been seeking from them? Oh, it's huge for the coach because he doesn't have to rely on one particular player or two particular players to provide the bulk of the scoring. Four guys can get involved on any particular play offensively. Huge advantage for the offense. All right, thank you guys. And we will see you in just a few moments calling all the action in tonight's game. All right, we have lots to come here on the Lopes pregame show. We are counting you down to tip off tonight here on Thunder, the GCU mascot's birthday. Havocs are in the house, and the stage is set. We have a lot of basketball coming your way. And when we come back, we're going to break down some of the star athletes here on campus. He may just be a freshman, but he's able to navigate the area quite well, both on the court and in the classroom. More details right after this. Across the painted desert to where the mountains touch the sky. This is Sanderson Ford country, where Arizona's pride. Sanderson Ford country, built on serving you. Sanderson Ford satisfaction in everything we do. We're Arizona's pride. Sanderson Ford. Whether you crave the night or savor the day, here we give you all a place to play. Talking Stick Resort, play in style. Welcome back, a live look inside GCU Arena as we're counting you down to tip off tonight. Between Grand Canyon and Utah Valley, the Lopes looking for their fourth straight victory. The Havocs in the house, lots of members of the community here as well. As mentioned, it is Thunder's birthday. And of course, what the Lopes want to see is a victory for that big celebration. And one of the guys we've been most impressed with on the court, um, given that he's still a freshman, but he's really been able to go out there, assert himself, and find a role here with this Lopes team. And that's Javon Blackshear, the freshman out of Oakland, California, not only navigating his way on the court, but he's also found purpose inside the classroom. We turn it over now to to GCU student reporter, Montana. GCU student athletes have their sights set on more than just the sport itself. They excel not only on the court, but in the classroom and within the community. These are your December Student Athletes of the Month. I was waiting for this moment for a long time. We're kicking off Student Athlete of the Month with the man of men's basketball, Javon Blackshear. Javon, you managed a 3.2 GPA this semester while being in your first season of collegiate basketball. Where do you think your GPA ranks compared to your teammates? Uh, I think I'm top, top dog. How did you do it? Hard work, <laughs> going to class every day, uh, paying attention. As a kid, you were constantly featured on the Ball is Life media accounts that has multi-millions of followers. Tell me about that. As a kid, we used to watch other people on Ball is Life and to see ourselves on there is a dream come true and the kids look up to us now, so we just want to inspire and get better every day. Being where you are now and going through everything that you've gone through, what advice would you give to those who look up to you? 
stay solid and be yourself and never give up. Um, everybody goes through obstacles as a part of life. You just gotta work through them and when you get those obstacles, how you overcome them is, is who you really are. We're here at the pool with Student Athlete of the Month from Women's Swim and Dive, Alyssa Christensen, and we just can't seem to keep her away from the water. You are a double major, managing a 3.8 GPA. I mean, playing collegiate sports themselves is almost a full-time job. How do you manage all of this? To get used to time management and juggling everything, but um, after I got the hang of it, it didn't come too hard. You just got to prioritize. You serve on the WAC Student Athlete Advisory Committee. What kind of responsibility do you have between the conference and GCU? I just gather information from WAC and what's changing within the conference. I just have a lot of uh, leadership roles to take on. Back in November, you came away with two personal wins within one weekend. What is the season looking like as we head into the spring for your team? So we kind of talked as a team. The women think that we could take top three at WAC so that's our main goal right now and I think we're on our way to doing that we just have to keep working hard in the pool and supporting each other and motivating each other to do better every day well thanks so much for joining me today student athlete of the month for December a huge accomplishment congratulations thank you. again thank you all right thank you so much Montana great to see GCU athletics and uh, their players really stepping up this campus not only taking pride in what they put on on the field and on the court but also what they can do in the classroom all right when we come back we check in with Jamie Box to get the pulse on all things athletics here on the GCU campus that's coming up when the Lopes Free Game Show comes right back right after this just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app Every day, no guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP, delivering water and power. Every day, no guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP, delivering water and power. Curiosity fuels you. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show coming at you live inside GCU Arena right here on Fox 10 Extra where the Lopes are getting ready to tip off action against Utah Valley coming up at the top of the hour. Kate Longworth welcoming you back in and I'm joined now by special guest interim vice president of GCU Athletics, Jamie Bach. Thank you so much for being here. It's always great to get uh, your take because you have a pulse here on campus on all things athletics. So first we'll start with the obvious basketball. GCU right now riding a three game win streak looking for victory number four what do you think has been fueling their success as of late i think we have some great leadership with alessandro lover and carlos johnson they really have been helping us offensively and leading the way having mikey dixon this semester has also been a big uh, pickup for the team i um, mean of course any dan marley team you're going to see a lot of defense and so continuing on this momentum i think it's going to be really good going into the conference uh, conference play um, we're really on a good roll and so we we think we're going to do uh, uh, continue to move forward and have some momentum going into conference season. Yeah, Coach Marley saying defense really needs to be the bread and butter of this team if they want to succeed in conference action. And then, of course, when March play rolls around, you uh, will be with the team when they head to Las Vegas for WAC tournament play. What can you just tell us about in the past what the Lopes have been able to do on the court, but then also how the Havocs have been able to show up and how really, if you're a Lopes fan, you don't want to miss this. Oh, the Havocs are the, one of the biggest parts of our success as a basketball program. They really are that person off the bench that 
gives us that game day atmosphere and helps us bring in these great recruits. They see what we have and they want to be a part of it and everyone wants to be a part of it. So as far as the WAC tournament, we were able to bring almost 2,000 people into the WAC tournament wow. last year. Um, a lot of Havocs and also a lot of GCU Lopes fans. And we want to do the same thing this year. Um, it really means a lot to our program. It really gives us that home court advantage. Um, right. and it's important for our team. And throughout the broadcast tonight, we'll actually uh, have an opportunity for fans to be there March 11th through 14th. So you want to make sure you stay dialed in here on Fox 10 Extra. And then uh, just kind of uh, checking in too with Nicole Powell's team. How have you seen the women's basketball team performing so far in conference action? Well, the women are young. It's a young team, but we had some really solid wins this past week. On Thursday, we had a great win against Seattle. And today we had a big win against Utah right. Valley. Utah Valley was leading the uh, WAC uh, conference. And so this was a big win for us. Um, again, we're young. May Bryant had a monster game today, scoring, I think, 16 points. Um, but a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, positives for this team. Um, uh, Deja Daniels, a senior for us, she's, uh, I think she's averaging double doubles right now and leading the conference in rebounds. So we do have a lot of promise going into the conference play and, of course, into the tournament as well. Yeah, the women set the stage with that 66-59 final over Utah Valley. Now we'll see if the men can help with the sweep today. Meanwhile, we had a chance on Thursday to check in with Andy Stankowitz, just previewing what's ahead for this baseball team. First of all, hats off for his top 30 recruiting class yes. for him, but also some excitement for the season ahead. He really said to be the best, you go after the best. And we see that in their home opener, opening up February 14th, right here, Fox 10 Extra against Oklahoma State. Yes, Andy is not afraid to schedule anyone. We have a really strong schedule again, as you said, opening up February 14th against Oklahoma State. We've also got some weekend series against Baylor, um, against Stanford. We're playing Oregon. It's going to be our first time in a long time playing ASU. Um, but he's not afraid, and we shouldn't be. Again, you said top recruiting class. That's two top nationally ranked recruiting classes in seven years, which is very impressive. Um, we've got a really strong team coming back as well. Cade Meckles, who was drafted this past year, elected to come back. We've got Pearson Ohl, who was a, a, made a huge impact as a freshman, coming back as a sophomore with more experience, even stronger. Um, and then we have got Dawson McCarville, who is a, a transfer for us. He's going to make an impact right away. We also got Cuba Best, Johnny Weaver, some great offensive hitters for us. Uh, so it's going to be a really solid team, and we're going to really do well this year. Yeah, always fun to see what Sanquitz can do out there on the diamond, especially uh, last year having five players drafted and then also seeing some of them return to action. And now jumping over to Coach Pearson's softball team. First of all, I mean, impressive what they do in the classroom. Once again, leading the WAC with the team GPA. But also, they are more than just book smart. They can go out there and get the job done on the field as yes. well. What are you anticipating for their season? Well, as you said, Coach Pearson does a tremendous job with the girls. They are great on the field. They're great off the, off the, uh, in the classroom and also in the community, a lot of community service as well. But um, we have great players coming back. We have Ryan Denhart, who's a good pitcher. We have Brianna Aguilar. We have Jesse Morrison. And we also have the WAC tournament coming back. And last year we were able to make it to the WAC tournament um, championship finals because we hosted and that home field advantage really makes a makes a huge impact. And so again, I think we had that opportunity to make the NCAA tournament again this year. And that's very exciting. And we touched on the recruiting for baseball, but women's soccer just got very exciting, especially for Midwest players because they know about Chris Sissel, who did sign on now to lead the way for the women's soccer team. Yes. What does he bring to this program? Well, Chris Sissel is a proven winner and a proven leader in our industry in women's soccer. He's won regular season championships um, in, in the WAC, so he knows how to win. He's a no excuses guy. He will find a way to win. And with the resources and support we have here at GCU, we think our program's going to go really far. He's really well respected. He has a family approach yeah. to the way he runs his team, and you can see the results of that um, in, in, in his championships and his success. And he also brought a new time for practice. It's pretty cool. Coach is going to have the women's soccer team practicing in the middle of the day, so they don't yes. miss time in the classroom, so they can not only come out here, do big things on the soccer field, but also get that degree. Well, Jamie, thank you so much for checking in with us. Always a pleasure. Thanks and for having me. We'll see you down courtside. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we come back. It is Thunder's birthday, and you know what? All he wants for his birthday is to hear from Dan Marley. He wants to know what the game plan is for tonight, and we know you want to know too. So when we come back, Barry Boutel goes one-on-one -on -one with Thunder Dan for Thunder's birthday.
State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. Welcome back to Lopes Basketball. We're counting you down to tip off with Utah Valley in the house tonight. But first, let's take a look at what's coming up for the men's basketball team. UTRGV next weekend and then New Mexico State right now 5-0 and in conference action. And you better believe the Lopes have had that one circled on the calendar. And then time for a little redemption, perhaps Cal Baptist February 8th. And then right back here with you on Fox 10 Extra February 13th. Well, last game, Dan Marley not only got the W, he also had a little bit of a wardrobe change. Barry Butel has more details on that and much, much more right now with the head coach. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, we're alongside Dan Marley. We're wearing the polo. Uh, usually, you know, we pre-tape this a little bit before a tip and then you switch into the suit. Yes. And you did that last game. Are you going to go with the polo look now uh, that you did that changeover at halftime last game? I plan game? on the suit tonight, but really? uh, don't hold it to me. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened is the, our air conditioning was out. Uh, of course it was. Before we in the locker room before we started, so I was sweating before oh I started, gosh. and then I came out, and I just couldn't stop. And then it was a little heated in the game. I got you a little got excited. You got a little heated. Yeah, you have and a then, tendency uh, to sometimes do that. Yeah, at halftime, I said, I can't go with this. <laughs> My guy Hayford, I love that dude. He's he, uh, so cool. He was like, uh, yeah, good good change. I said, well, you can do it. I can do it. So I didn't look as good as he is, but that's fine. He got a little fired up with that water bottle uh, uh, and ricocheted on the court. He got. He uh, he's got an emotional guy. I love yeah. him. He's a, he's a heck of a competitor. I've known him for a long time, and uh, we play golf a few times in the off season uh, at the Biltmore, so I've known him for a while. He's a he's a fiery competitor and I love coaching. Oh yeah, stuff. and that was a great game. He even posted a little bit of a, a scouting tape on on Twitter that Aloha play there in the corner over the nettles that that they tried to do late in the game and uh, they were unsuccessful at. But they they tried to throw everything at you guys to to come out with a victory. Well, yeah, we uh, we helped them a lot on that. I don't know how great <laughs> of a play it was. I think it was more lack of uh, concentration. You sure, and, it wasn't uh, just great execution. Well, I mean, the guy was wide open. He wasn't running off a whole Oops. lot of screen. Our guys were kind of falling asleep, so as you could tell, I was a little upset about that. You were, but it was nonetheless uh, your third straight victory. You got to feel pretty good about how the team's playing lately. I really did. You know, usually, uh, well, not usually. When we come off of wins uh, early in the season, we kind of take a step back. And I thought uh, our mentality was great. We went out on the road and played really well. Um, we came here, and I thought right at the beginning we jumped on them early. We knew it was going to be a rock fight. We knew they were a good team. They can really score the ball. Uh, Brown was terrific for them. Um, but I thought we just really sustained. Uh, came up with some huge plays offensively. Carlos, Alessandro, yeah. uh, Isaiah making some free throws. So it was really good. It was it was a fantastic win for us. Carlos, he picks up a career point 1,000 in the game and really uh, took took it over there late. Big bucket, and then he comes down in a huge defensive stop. Yeah, you know, down the stretch, we tried to get at him or, or Ali, and he did a really good job on one play, taking the basket. And then we ran a post-up play for him and didn't get it to him right away, and our guys were really patient and found him uh, there. There's the, the play we kind of ran of a, a pitch play where he took the basket, made a great play. And then on this post up, that was a huge bucket. And I said, he, did, he wasn't open at the beginning. Our guys were really good uh, being patient and make sure he got the ball. So he's gonna be a guy that, uh, along with Alessandro, uh, that will get the ball to at the end of the game. Yeah, Laver had 16 points in the game, seven rebounds, and really more importantly, he was five for five from the line. Got into some foul trouble, as did a number of guys. A couple of guys foul out. Well, the refs were calling it really tight yep. on both on both ends of the floor. So, uh, you know, Javon got in foul trouble, Isaiah got in foul trouble early, uh, Alessandro got into foul trouble, but I was able to put both Javon uh, and Ali back in the game with about six minutes. They kind of righted the ship. Javon fouled out, uh, but we were able to sustain it. So hopefully it won't be as tightly called tonight. Bryce Okpo, he, uh, the freshman, we've, we've talked plenty about Javon Blackshear picking up the rebounding, but 
he's got some quality minutes, and he's also rebounding on both ends of the floor. Well, that's his job. You know, Bryce is a terrific athlete, um, can really elevate. His job right now is to get in there and rebound the basketball and play defense. Uh, we've talked about it all year long. This is a guy we were going to plan on redshirting this year. He's stepped in and not only has stepped in, but he's really worked hard, uh, lives in the gym, and because of that, he's found his way into the starting lineup. And he's providing energy, and he's doing a great job on the boards. Mikey Dixon, a little bit streaky here. He had a couple of really good games on that on that road swing. A little off, but uh, certainly contributing on the floor when he's out there. Yeah, I thought he was off, but what I liked about it is he had good shots. Yes. So he wasn't forcing any of them. Mm -hmm. uh, he took really good shots. He was good with the basketball. Uh, they just didn't happen to go in, which is fine. Um, shooters are going to have those kind of nights. But I was really uh, happy with the shot selection and what he was trying to do on the floor. So. Uh, he's going to be fine. Uh, he's a guy that's going to really put a lot of pressure on the defense, and he'll have more good nights than bad. Now, Seattle comes in. There's Mark Madsen, a guy you played, I guess, one year in the NBA with, the 2001-2002 season when you were with the Heat and he was with the Lakers. Uh, he takes didn't over. remember that. You didn't remember? No. Well, no. he was in the West. I was in the East at sure, the time. Sure. We played once yeah, you got your own issues with the Heat. he was on the bench. Yeah. Oh, there you go. But I like Mark. Hi, fans. I like Mark. No, I like Mark a lot. A Mark's guy. a great guy. Yeah. And, I, and it's, it's another, uh, to be serious, it's another uh, great addition to the WAC. Yep. We continue to get really good coaches uh, with high pedigrees, and, and Mark's paid the price. He's been a player for a long time, a really good player, uh, played in the league, as you mentioned, and then uh, has, has done a good job in the coaching ranks, and uh, we're excited to have him here in the WAC. They came out on fire 3-1, and one, and since then have gone 5-12, and 12, but they've got some players. Isaiah White's leading the way, T.J. Washington also on their squad uh, what do you see here what's this well, guy good report? you're right they're they're struggling right now but they're they're a good team they uh you know kind of uh, took it on the chin at seattle but bounced back and played a really good game a, a defensive game at bakersfield loss in overtime this is a team that can score uh their guards are terrific they get downhill they can shoot it uh they can get to the free throw line they got an athletic uh a big it's you know one of the leading shot blockers in the nation uh so it's going to be another great test for us all right well good luck uh with the ac in the locker room tonight. Stay dry. Stay dry. That is the uh, wisdom there from the head coach. We'll send it back upstairs to you, Kate. All right. Thank you, Barry. And uh, we did turn down the lights in here for Dan Marley to keep it a little bit cool before he comes out on court. We did say he'll be back in the suit and tie. Meanwhile, the Havocs getting things started here with the light show courtesy of the Lopes app. And when we come back, we'll continue to wrap things up here on the Lopes pregame show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Speed desert to where the mountains touch the sky. This is Sanderson Ford country, where Arizona's pride. Sanderson Ford country, built on serving you. Sanderson Ford satisfaction in everything we do. We're Arizona's pride. Sanderson Ford. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant. In-laws were coming. A little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA, get your insurance quote today. Well, it is always a party here at GCU Arena, but you better believe on Thunder's birthday, the Havocs are bringing their all, hoping the Lopes will do the same as they go up against Utah Valley. I would let you know how old the GCU mascot is, but I just can't do those conversions when it comes to antelope years. But I do know he's young at heart. All right, well, we're going to take you a trip around the WAC. Don't worry, you don't have to get off the couch. Cal State Bakersfield did outlast Utah Valley in overtime on Thursday, although uh, Utah Valley comes in tonight after a loss. That's not bad for the Lopes. However, we do want to see Bakersfield start to take some losses, too, since they are second in the standings. Meanwhile, that top spot belongs to the Aggies. They have now won 20 straight conference victory or 20 straight conference games. And conference leaders right now, Terrell Brown. We saw him the other night averaging 19 points per game. But the Lopes handled him in Seattle University on Thursday. And now they hope to get their fourth straight victory tonight with Utah Valley in town. Barry and Scott have the call. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after this. This Waste Management Phoenix Open will finally be his.
one more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes! Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes close out their homestand, looking to extend their three-game winning streak as they play host to the Utah Valley Wolverines. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Barry Butel. Kay Longworth will be along in just a moment. Yeah, the Lopes are riding high. Winners of three straight and a big 80 to 77 win against Seattle on Thursday, Scott. Yeah, they did it with the defense. I love that. They really got down in a stance and guarded. 40% shooting for the Red Hawks could go nowhere on the floor. The Lopes were smothering, played on a chain. Nobody broke that chain. Career point 1,000 for Carlos Johnson. A big night, especially down the stretch. Yeah, the different maker has become a leader as well on the floor. I love his aggressive play to the basket, driving hard early in the game, coming across, blocking shots, keeping his teammates fired up and what is he attacked that rim with the thunderous dunks down in it, it doesn't matter you put two guys on him he still finds a way to be aggressive and put the ball in the basket and Utah Valley led by their 6-7 guard Isaiah White Isaiah White's a fabulous player I and mean, this guy can do a little bit of everything on the floor he loves to drive the ball to the basket he's got the ability to shoot the three he's made 10 this season he doesn't take a whole lot of them but if you leave them wide open he will make you pay 13 points and a career high 18 rebounds in the loss at Bakersfield in overtime coming back 13 games after missing eight with a knee injury. We'll watch Isaiah White and the Wolverines, but now it's time to get things started. Let's send it down to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the beautiful GCU Arena for tonight's Western Athletic Conference men's basketball matchup between the Wolverines of Utah Valley University and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Tonight's game is sponsored by Maryvale Life. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Tristan Goldhammer, a junior majoring in graphic design and advertising. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come together and be this community, Lord. I pray that you put your hand of protection over all the players, and I pray that you would just provide safe travels for all the officials, fans, and teams tonight, Lord. I pray that you would just be the center of everything, even in this basketball game, Lord. We love you so much, and in your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Tristan. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with a presentation of the National Anthem. Tonight, the Star Spangled Banner will be performed by the Horizon Honors Choir under the direction of Chris Granger. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleam. Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets, and the rockets, rise the
Thank you, Horizon Honors Choir. One thing's for sure, the choirs in this state at the high school level are phenomenal. Mark Madsen, 8-13 overall in his first season at Utah Valley, the former L.A. Laker. Here is his starting five, brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. T.J. Washington, Brandon Everett, Isaiah White, Emmanuel Ojapoki, and Kasdan Jardine. Yeah, we're gonna keep my eye on the six-foot senior guard, T.J. Washington. He's second in this team with, uh, with scoring a 13.3 a game. He leads them assist, not quite for a game, but he really knows how to get all of his pieces on the floor in the right spot. The assistant coaches Todd Phillips, Todd Okasin, and Jared Jackson. Eight and 13, four and nine away from Orem, two and four in the WAC are the Utah Valley Wolverines. Time now to introduce you to GCU. and block shots. They got two big bodies on side that will send it back to Cinder <laughs> if you don't come in there strong with some aggression. So whether it's Labor or Carlos Johnson or Jenkins, anybody driving in there, don't come in there half stepping. Come in there ready to finish with some authority. The associate head coach Marvin Menzies, the assistant coaches Chris Prevalone and Isaac Jew, director of basketball operations Dylan Hidalgo, special assistant to the head coaches Johnny Hill, the video coordinator is Matt Lopez, director of sports medicine Jordy Hackett, and the director of sports performance is Gabe Borland. 16th meeting, the Lopes 10 and 5, overall 5 and 1 here in Phoenix. Time now for our Sanderson Ford three keys to the game. Sanderson Ford, the best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Yeah, in honor of one of my favorite dirt workers, hard hat lunch pill guys, the play in the NBA, Mark Madsen, the Mad Dog. Well, that's exactly what this Lopes team has to do tonight. They have to win the hustle game. Yes, hustle is a skill. Go out and win that game. Hold this team to sub 45% shooting defensively. And then the Beehive State. Love the state of Utah, don't you, Barry? Oh, beautiful. Everybody's got to get involved in the community, the way they share that basketball against Seattle, 11 assists. And not only just the 11 assists, but the assist that led to the assist. No had has a hockey assist, yeah, Barry. That's, right. that's what the Lopes got to do today. Share that basketball, work together as one high. Offensively, good things will happen. And then this last one's just a mentality. Heard Coach Marley talking about in the pregame show. Waste management open. That's right, Char yeah. charity. You got to do whatever you can to help the team win. That's not always scoring a point, blocking a shot, or getting a rebound. Sometimes it's diving on the ball for uh, the floor for a loose ball, taking a charge, picking a teammate up when he's made a bad play, not letting him get dejected. And we'll all have a good time in the bird's nest. Ronnie Hernandez, John Stigolano, and Don Ferdahl, the officials and Lopes fans can take a seat. Yeah, you know that Waste Management Open is one of my favorite events of the so year. I've They've heard. raised 137 million mm -hmm. since 1932 for charities. The Thunderbirds do a good job. They do a phenomenal job. T.J. Washington, leader in assists and steals for Utah Valley, comes near side off the wing. Looking to move towards the baseline. Johnson supports. Wide open look for three. Off the mark. Rebound, though. Picked up by White. A foul and a bucket. Surprise, surprise. That's what that young man does. He goes up there and chews glass, 
gets on that weak side board, just uses his size and his strength, pins the uh, Lopes player underneath the basket, comes down with that board, bucket in one. 14-3.3 points per game for Isaiah White from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Just have a house in Rancho Cucamonga. Couldn't get that free throw to go. Almost nine and a half rebounds a game at 6-7. Woo! Bucks here, left side. Mikey Dixon, the wing bounce pass into labor. Looking to turn on Ola Japoki. Off the glass and in, labor. Uh, he just kind of faked like he was going to pass the ball underneath the basket. Throws the defender and then snuck it right past his ear hole and in the bucket. Labor, nice job being patient around that basket. Washington kicks back out. Jardine goes to the left. White backs up, looks to move. Shut down by Johnson. Washington hands it off. Everett. That lane shut. Stops, pops, and hits. Oh, nice mid-range game there. Nice job getting to that spot on the floor where he's comfortable. That elbow. Dreamson just knocked it down. Waver quickly. Dixon. Reach in there by Brandon Averett. The redshirt junior from Richardson, Texas. That's something Michael Dixon has really learned to do. And he catches that ball. Doesn't hesitate with the ball. Doesn't freeze. He's either going to drive it, you're going to pass it, or you're going to shoot it. That time he put it on the floor, caught the defender a half step slow. Another watch and win night. Stay tuned. Get your cell phones ready. Back out, Labor. Hands it off. Johnson stops. Looking for three. Ooh, off the mark. Rebound pulled down by the Wolverines. Tied at four early on in Phoenix. There you see it. Watch and win. Text win the whack. 602-639-8979. A random winner will be selected. Enter. Your name and uh, the city that you're watching the Lopes tonight. And you are headed to Lope Vegas, March 11th through the 14th. Labor trying to work, skips the loose ball, push back out. Johnson's trying to drive. Boy, the traffic is heavy in front. Labor, the Wolverines pull it down. They put a lot of bodies in front of that rim to try to stop the Lopes on that drive. Ola Japoki is six nationally in blocks. Turnover, carried that basketball. Wanted to go from his re uh, right to his left. He did the old Allen Iverson where he put his hand up underneath the basketball and the referee saying, nah, we're not having that up in here tonight. Not up in here. Havoc's out in full force here Saturday night. Great three-game atmosphere. Oko, Okpo over to Johnson. Johnson, far side off the wing, back up. Top. Looking to move on Washington. Little floater. Good. How about Silky Smooth? Really like that one to have a young freshman. I'll tell you what, he had a little something to his game every month that goes off this calendar. That was a nice little floater from going from to his left side of the lane there. Floats it back up with the right hand. Quick shot by Washington. Big rebound. Labor able to grab it. That was a long rebound. Labor had to really stretch for that one. 6-6, six, six, Blackshear. Top of the key. Drives. Up high. Quickly, Averett driving, right hand and in. You can see they want to play a fast, up tempo style of game. Wolves must get back in transition and limit that coast to coast driving action. Yeah, the tempo is quick, huh? Driving Dixon, how about that? Hoover to Harb. Well, that's what I'm talking about when you drive the ball to the hole. You can't avoid the contact with the big fella coming over to try to block the shot. You got to try to go right up into his chest, take that blow, and then still have the concentration to finish. Look at this Blackshear floater one more time down that left wing there. Catches the defender between dribbles and just rises up with the floater. Good to see Michael Dixon off to a nice start. Four or five. Lope starters with a bucket already. Look at this little three-quarter press here. Ooh, off of Blackshear. I like that. Just slow him down a little bit at that made free throw. <laughs> Coach Marley says no more racing the ball down our throats. Gonna make you take a little more time off the clock in the backcourt. Have to get to your half court set. And they stay in that zone. Haber, back to Washington. Now he comes to White. Bounce pass, Ola Chipoki. Looking to back in on labor. Swarmed there by Johnson. Back 
And a quick three coming in was Jardine, and Blackster said, no, 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 no. Oh, he put it down where Blackster likes to live, and she's took that ball like deep valley. Baba. Sweet move. Back to Labor. Ooh, that didn't happen. Wash White with it. Up to Washington. They're on him. Back to White. A little bit of real estate and a little teardrop. You got to get in front of White. He's like a Mack truck coming down that lane. You got to sacrifice your body and put it right in front of him. Wolverine faithful. Johnson backs up. Gets a little momentum. Lost the ball a little bit. Stops and puts it right in the bucket. Great shot by Johnson, but probably a better screen by Labor. Defender just melted on right off of Labor's jersey. Johnson had plenty of room to eye the basketball and knock down the little 12-footer on the right side. I haven't seen this one-two two press out of the looks much this year. Looking to drive off balance and white somehow puts it home. Oh, you don't want to let this guy get off to a quick start. He put 26 uh, up on the board quickly on you. Got six points on three of three shooting to start this one here. We barely got five minutes and 30 seconds off the clock. We're getting tired of the pace of this game as they came out of the gates flying, both teams. Labor! Beautiful move! That's become his bread and butter. That left shoulder turn, that strong right hand hook, unstoppable. Both teams, 10 points in the paint. Averett back to. Washington, a long three, big rebound. Blackshire says, here, here you I go. Say, I would buy him a Coke if he can make that one. That, that one was out there by the G and the GCU and the center of the floor. That's where Steph Curry and them guys shoot from. Lever, muscling his way. Oh, blind pass. Oh, doesn't go for Okpo, but draws the foul. Time out on the floor. Time to take a break. 14.05 to go. We'll be right back. So one key component that makes the Waste Management Phoenix Open so successful is Cox Business. Over 700,000 people are gonna come enjoy TPC Scottsdale from digital TV to digital phones to security, and most importantly, that free Wi-Fi all over this property. We simply couldn't do it without a partner like Cox Business. We're grateful, we're thankful, it's a hole in one. Across the green desert to where the mountains touch the sky. This is Sanderson Ford Country, where Arizona's pride. Sanderson Ford Country, built on serving you. Sanderson Ford satisfaction in everything we do. We're Arizona's pride. Sanderson Ford. GCU Men's Basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. And by SRP, delivering water and power. Barry Butel, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth here from GCU Arena. Let's send it down to Kate. Well, guys, the players huddled up right now with just over 14 minutes to go in this first half. And after a three-point win over Seattle U on Thursday, the Wolves players said they were playing better together, making better reads. And while the results, well, they were looking pretty. Bryce Oko making his eighth start of the season tonight. The 6'7 freshman had six points, two assists in that win on Thursday night. He was also a team leader on the board. One of the team leaders on the board. He had eight rebounds as the Wolves are able to out rebound the Red Hawks, making for a happy Dan Marley in that category. The Seattle U strong on the boards normally, but Lopes with the advantage on that one. 47 31, and we'll see if they can bring the D tonight and also some offense right now, guys. No doubt. Yeah, they got their first their first bucket was the fastest this season. This pace has been uh, frenetic. Yeah, don't they know I was in the hospital earlier this yeah. week? I'm trying to catch my breath up here the way they're going up and down the floor. Now, to add to what pace, uh, Kate was saying about the boards, they had 14 offensive rebounds against Seattle U. I mean, that's a huge number. Extra possessions, more opportunities. That's, cool. that's effort, right? That's all effort. Yeah. Want to. Yep. Jenkins in for Oakpo. Jenkins had 13 against Seattle U. White. Bounce pass in the corner. 
Off the rim, pulled down by Jenkins. All, both these teams are doing their damage inside. Ten points in the paint for both, both basketball clubs right now, and then nothing really going from the outside behind that arc. That was a well-constructed play coming to that timeout, but just couldn't get the shot to fall. Woodbury misses the Wolverines, now 0 for 5 from the arc. Johnson, turnaround, that doesn't go. Not sure Marley likes Carlos taking those shots. Averett, White, moves over to the right side. Near side, Washington, looking to move it in. Jardine, back out baseline, kicks it out. Wide open look, the long distance three. In and out. Wow, that was closer to going oh, down, but still he's taking, he seems like he, he's a little smaller player, thinks he has to get a little further out, give himself some more time to get that shot off. He's shooting that ball, get three feet behind the three-point line. Labor kicks back out. How about it, Mikey? Ooh. You don't like it. Yeah, everybody was going inside before the timeout break. Now we come out of the timeout break, everybody starts shooting from the outside. Somebody take it inside. Wolverines are 0 for 6. They're 6 for 6 on other shots. It ain't hard. Game not hard. If, if something's working, keep going to it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just keep attacking the basket. Uh, both squads are really doing a nice job going inside. Lopes with the drive and the dishes. Um, floaters, little little jump shots just off the free throw line. And coming out of that timeout, they forgot what they were doing. WAC tournament, March 11th through the 14th. It's a watch and win night. Text win the WAC to 602 639 8979. Include your name and what city you're watching the Lopes tonight. You. Ooh, there's the first three, and White looks back to the bench. Mm. <laughs> yeah, White says, hey, hey, well, let's put this ball in your mouth. I can make them from all over the floor. You heard me talking about my only make 10 three pointers on the season. Well, there's 11. Nice job. This young man is hot. He's still four for four from the field. Lethal. Brown. Back out. Doobie Jenkins. Nice pass. Wonderful assist. You nailed it, Barely. That's like when those hockey players, they skate behind the goal and they pass it back to one of their teammates and he slaps it past the goalie. That's exactly what that reminded me. Brown got deep penetration and then found somebody right in front of the hoop. Woodbury underneath, off the glass and in for the Wolverines. I'll tell you what, this Wolverines team, 11 of their games this season have been decided by six points or less. I know we're early in this basketball game, but this one has one of those feelings. It's gonna come down to the final two minutes. And Mark Massey with the seven-footer, and Brandon Morley picked up his first bucket. Laver. Ooh. Pass wasn't so sweet, but uh, the Lopes fortuitous. Missed one more time here. With Brown going along that baseline there, slips it right to his teammate. Doobie Jenkins knows what to do with it. Lopes and the Wolverines are tied at 17. You have a foundation of strong values. You belong where your passions come to life. Grand Canyon University's online degree program in cybersecurity makes it convenient for you to join the newest front in keeping your community safe. GCU teaches you how to secure and protect a virtual environment. Join the growing field of cybersecurity. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant. In-laws were coming. A little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. Welcome back. We're knotted up 17 all between the Wolverines and Lopes with just under 12 to go in the first half. And it's conference action. Dan Marley calls this the second part of the season and every game counts, especially when it's Thunder's birthday. You got to win one for the mascot, right? Otherwise you get a cake in the face. And all the games matter here. Why? Because, well, you can make an impact on the standings. Grand Canyon saw evidence of just that Thursday night beating Seattle University, leapfrogging over the Red Hawks right there. And right now they stand in third place with Cal Baptist Bakersfield tied in second 4-1. New Mexico State with that 5-0 record. But 
Grand Canyon will be seeing them to start off February so they can have a chance to play spoiler there. But guys, I mean, I think this is exciting. I imagine as a player, Scott, when you know you can go out there, not only win the game, but you can see an impact you can have when it comes to conference play. Oh yeah, keep moving up those standings. I mean, my Tar Heels would have been god awful this year. They got a big win today as well. Got to throw that in there. Jiggins a labor open for three. Put it in the bag. I'll tell you what, this team is really playing well offensively. 20 points before we even get 10 minutes into this basketball game. Everybody moving the basketball. Everybody scored. Everybody has played more than two minutes of scored in this game. Whoops up by three. Woodbury near side. Washington looks to drive right hand, and that was a sweet move. Yeah, got it cross Brown up. He just put it in drive. And Brown thought he was going to cut back the other way. He just kept going until he got all the way to the other side of the rim and scored. Brown and Blackshear play catch. Blackshear gets some help from Brown. Oh, a little hand on it, but Labor for two of it. Yeah, one of those big blocks, and Labor follows his man right to the basket. When he goes for that block, the ball comes right to him. And notice young big men out there. He didn't bring the ball back down to his waist or down by his knees and gather strength. He kept it high and he finished fast. Leaving White alone. This time he's off the mark. Nine points for White. Leading all scores. Blackshear, Brown up top, moves right. Johnson went right. Now he's kicking back. Now to Brown. 12 on the shot clock, Blackshear. Looked like he was going baseline. Bounce back, Jenkins. Finds Blackshear again. How about that? Tic tac toe. Bam! What penetration, what passing, what precision. That was really nice basketball mm -hmm. in that possession by the Lopes. They used the patience. You had some patience on that. Really, everybody shared the basketball, and it resulted in a nice field goal right in front of the bucket. Oh, that. He might have to buy him a soda. Six assists on 10 field goals, Washington. <laughs> well, Washington, I tell you what, these guys don't like me talking bad about the three-point shooting. They went down and knocked a couple screens down after I talked bad about them. Say something nice. Brown, bounce pass, labor, turning on Morley, driving on him, goes right. Morley's big left hand came up. Brown, six on the shot clock. Johnson kicked out, wide open, look! Oh, it's off the mark. White with the rebound. White looking to drive. Throws up the right hand and TJ. Washington. TJ just too fast on that one. He's gotten a couple lopes flat footed, just put on the afterburners. He's gone right to the bucket. Washington, the Wolverines leader. Assists and steals. Labor. Tied at 24. Labor and Brown trying to work that left side. Labor trying to work on Morley. Kick back out. Brown, little floater up top. Loose got deflected in front. Yeah, Brown's out of sorts offensively. He's had a couple opportunities where he got the ball, wasn't ready to shoot. Then he takes and tries to take the big guy off the drive, and that was an easy block shot. So he, he's got to figure out how to settle himself down offensively and get into this basketball game. He's the only one hand scored. Boberton took it. Doesn't go. Blackshear. Have the numbers, do the lopes. Foul. Wow. You know, I love that play by Blackshear. He gave the ball to the big man running the wing early enough that it doesn't oh, handcuff oh, him at the basket. Get the ball in his hands early. Then he can decide if he wants to just go ahead and power the ball in or if he needs to take one little rhythm dribble to figure out what the defender's going to do, either pass the ball back or take it himself. That was a nice play by Blackshear and a nice job by Jenkins using his wheels and getting out and running that right wing. Lorenzo hits that front end. Woodbury with the uh, personal foul. A transfer from UNLV. So I'm talking to uh, Louis Bungay and also a transfer from UNLV before the game. I'll tell you what, Jenkins, I think he's a little disappointed he lost his spot in that starting rotation to Oppo. But he is just so good coming off that bench. Marley needs to have a little energy offensively off that bench. He likes him. The way he comes in and can be aggressive off that bench. Can't have too many guys scoring in the starting lineup. Can't have some guys coming off that bench that can score as well. Overton 
takes it from Jardine. Everett moves left, near side, on the low bench, trying to move on Okpo. Trying to do a little step back. No going there. Overton. How about shot that for Thomas? Violation. Wow. Shut, shut it down. 30 seconds of good hustle there. Shuts him down. A lot of hustle in this game. The Lopes up 25-24 in the game. And look at the uh, precision passing, Scott. But you, you got to love this one here because everyone shares the ball. Give it up. Get it back. Give and go. And then find the guy cutting right to the basket. Really unselfish Lopes basket. Alessandro Labor with nine points. Carlos Johnson with six in the uh, early moments of this game. And it has been an up-tempo game for both teams. Yeah, they're really getting after it. I mean, a lot of hard drives to the basket on both both ends of the floor. Guys knocking down some three-point shots after they said they couldn't make any. I know. Uh, this is going to be an exciting game. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here in the opening half. Carlos Johnson and Alessandro Labor. Uh, you got to love this one by here by uh, Carlos Johnson. He's just going hard to the hole. And then I love this one here. Just pick it up after a, a massive screen by Labor and knock down the, the little mid-range game. And then this one here, Alessandro Labor just freezes the defender with a little head and shoulder fake. Then once you make a couple inside, that basketball gets big as a basketball hoop gets as big as a hula hoop. And then you can just knock down the outside three-point shot as well. So those two guys got it going offensively. The rest of the Lopes generally will fall. For every three-point shot that GCU makes, Canyon State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, go to giving.gcu.edu. Carlos Johnson and the Lopes trying to extend their winning streak to four games against Utah Valley. May Bryant with a big 16-point performance for the Lope, Lady Lopes. 66-59 up in Orem. Coach Powell and the Lopes playing well. Yeah, they're, they're rolling, aren't they? Very competitive Western Athletic Conference. Lopes back in the thick of things. They're winners of three straight. Great crowd here at GCO Arena. Allen behind the team. 7.20 and counting, opening half. Jenkins able to gather in that pass. Kicked out to Dixon. Blackshear. Top of the key. Out to Brown. He's going to heave up a three. That is in and out. Loose ball. Yep. Everyone didn't fall, but he was ready to catch and shoot. Yep. And, and that's what I like about that. He had a couple other ones that he, he had to kind of step back and find the three-point line and wasn't quite sure if he, if he ended up trying to get it off. That one he knew. The play was designed for him. I'm going to catch this ball, and the ball just rimmed out. Averett. Christine turning back out into the corner. Long distance shot. Good by Ege Popsu. Wow. Tom Valley has come to play tonight. He's their first lead of the game, I believe. Istanbul, Istanbul Turkey native. 11 of 33 from the arc. Dixon. That's that verticality rule. They got some big trees in there. That's why they are eighth in the nation in block shots. They play tall and long around the basket. Here we go again, other side, Hafsa. Oh, back-to-back -back threes, a killer. GCU has got to figure out these corner three-point shooters. Run them off that line. Yeah, Seattle tried to hit from the corner on Thursday. Nettles just came up short. 11-1 run for Utah Ballot. Up by five, quickly. Stop, little floater, not going to go. Opo trying to get the loose ball. But the Wolverines come up. Jardine leaves for Hofsa. I was going to say, you got Carlos Johnson labor on that bench. I had to look over the scores table, and sure enough, they're ready to come check back in. Coach Marley could not give them any more rest. Got to get them back in the game because the offensive uh, output is all of a sudden gone. Morley left hand foul. Okpo. Okpo trying to work on the seven footer. Yeah, he's giving up a lot of inches and some pounds down there. He'll battle as best he can, but better matchup for Labor back in on him. South Jordan, Utah, senior, Brandon Morley. Five of 15 now from the 
charity strike. Five and a half to go here. Yeah, let's see if they get the ball in the hands of Labor or Johnson here offensively if they can. Brown, Johnson. Look to Labor, covered heavily. Dixon up over the top to Jenkins. Jenkins trying to find some room. Step back off the mark. Yeah, that's a tough shot right there. You got a seven footer on you, you can't really see the basket as you're. Going into your shooting motion. That's a real difficult shot. Pops up. Little twist around Johnson. Everett. Back it up. Everett kicks back. Pops up. Beyond the arc. Little off balance. Nice job by Carlos Johnson. Recognizing the hot shooter. Got him off his spot. He wasn't able to get his feet set and missed it. Into Jenkins. Kicked out, Brown. Brown into the paint, back out, Jenkins. That's in and out. <laughs> 0 for 7 from the field. Brown for the Lopes, trying to drive. Hopso kicks it out to White. Look who's back on the court. <laughs> that one almost got the bounce. Yeah, it bounced up higher than the top of the backboard and almost fell back in. Four minute scoring drought for the Lopes. They need a bucket here. Inside, Labor. Swarmed by White. Oh, they got him for a three second violation down there. Labor had two defenders on him. He was trying to split him. Three seconds was just too much. Utah Valley's Wolverine lead is five. We'll be back. This waste management Phoenix Open will finally be his. so far in the first half, guys. Thanks, Kate. We'll look forward to that. Sands are tied tonight. Well, the team played well in the second half when he went to the polo. That's right. If he's superstitious, he may come back out in that same polo. Lopes, one of eight from the arc, nine of 16. With the two. Jardine, 40% three-point shooter. I don't think he's attempted one. Looks to drive. Step back. Kick back out. Washington. Eyed by Dixon. Labors there as well. Swarmed all around him. Kicked it out. Found White. No look pass. 
At times, the Lopes defense has been absolutely fantastic. Two shot clock violations here in the first half. And other times, they've getting honed by, and they've given up some layups, and they forgot where guys are in the corner. So a little bit more concentration on the defense and in, and you know they'll get right back in. There's still this momentum going back to the half. They don't have to have the lead, but still the momentum back. Looking for a bucket. It's been a while. Laver looking to move on Morley. Right hand might have got a little of it. Didn't come off his hand really clean. Yeah, you saw it exactly the way I saw it, Barry. It seemed like it slipped in, a, in his hand just enough where he couldn't get it to go down. Oh, for their last eight from the field. Wolverines, no look shot attempt. Morley's underneath, long three, way off the mark. Oh, they got numbers. They do have numbers. Bounce, pow! I think it got his wrist. Yeah. Yes, it did. But. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I think Carlos Johnson was trying to get that ball to his right hand so he could throw one of his tomahawk jams down, but before he could get it over to the right side, the defender comes over and says, no, sir, you will have to go to the line and make him the hard one. You're not going to get this crowd excited. It's a watch and win night. All you need to do is text win the whack to 602-639-8979. Before halftime, include your name and what city you're watching the Lopes from, and you could be entered to watch the upcoming whack tournament in Las Vegas. A couple of tickets randomly selected, so get it in there. Two and a half minutes before halftime. Great time at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, March 11th through the 14th. If you want information, gclopes.com slash events. All the information on tickets, hotel event information. White from the arc. Not there. Wolverine's getting a little chilly now. Time for the Lopes. Dixon, how about it? He tried to get the rebound. He knew it was off the mark. Washington. Man, he just, it just he doesn't seem like it's supposed to go in. Now, but the Lopes aren't really shutting him down. They're kind of riding him towards the baseline, but that's what he wants. He's used to flipping that up over taller defenders. He's got 11 points on five of eight field goal shooting. Johnson. Foul called. It's like Washington. Yeah. That's the seventh team foul on Utah Valley. So Carlos Johnson going back to that cherry strike. If he can get front end down, he'll get a second free throw. And one good thing is the Lopes don't want to jinx this, but foul trouble is not a problem right now. Yeah, they only got three and a half. I mean, they're doing a good job of staying out of foul trouble. He's got to find those shooters on that outside a little bit quicker and cut off that drive and wash it. White. Four-point lead for Utah Valley. Pops up. Got a couple of big three-point shots. Jardine. Back to Hops up. Near side, Washington looks to drive baseline. Oh man, he's, he's looking smooth. Got his own rebound. Confident in going awesome. in that uh, painted area. White stops. Swatted away by Oak well, That's a nice job by the young freshman. Coming off of his guy from the weak side. As White takes it in there, Oak Post just in the air, waiting. <laughs> the matrix. I love this. Six on the shot clock. Do they know it? Five, four. Ooh, look at this. Ah, oh, good. Moogly, moogly. Uh, Opo tried to race that ball down to the corner, but like you said, they don't have any foul trouble, so it's not like he's going to the line and shooting any free throws. Unfortunately, that's going to be Opo's second, I believe, personal foul. White gives it back. Washington. Another foul on the floor. Uh, you're right about Washington, though. TJ 
is just trying to go to the basket every time he catches it now. This is on me. I should have kept my mouth shut. Inbound, a little low to the big man, Jardine. Back out, hops up. Dixon gets up quickly. White, look out. Washington, looking to move on Brown. Underneath, Ola Chipoki, short. Okpo there. 41 seconds and counting, and the Lopes trying to get tighter. Timeout and Marley, 36.7 on the clock. Well, they won't get the lead going to the half like we talked about, but that 11 to 1 run where Utah Valley had it all going on, they've kind of stolen that momentum, at least stifled that energy that they had going, and now they're playing them kind of even up. But, you know, they haven't had a field goal for 9 minutes and 16 seconds in this game, Barry. They had 20 points in 9 and a half minutes, they got 8 points in the last 11 and a half minutes. So offensively, the Lopes were rolling along and all of a sudden thud. <laughs> well, two tires went flat on that <laughs> on that vehicle they were riding in. Yeah, Utah Valley, one of their last 10, 0 for their last four. So a uh, bucket here by the Lopes. As you mentioned a few moments ago, the momentum uh, going into half, you know? Yeah, I'm in a, in a bucket here after timeout and everyone goes out and executes it. Everyone's gonna feel good about that right here. Here we go. Johnson, back to Brown. Brown moves right. Mikey Dixon. Right by Washington. Ooh, White's going to oh, be called. Silly foul there by yeah, White. Really silly. And Carlos Johnson basically First. with his back to the basket, out behind the three-point line, and he gets up on his body and pushes him right into the mad dog over there on the bench. Put Carlos Johnson on the free throw line. There's no perfect basketball player, but there's there's some you you you, you go to the locker room and you go, why did I do that? <laughs> and it hits the front end. Does Johnson one way to get back into the game? And the lead is down to two. believe Washington or White will take the final shot in this half some four. I wouldn't be surprised if Washington tries to put his head down and get to that basket. Well, he's done it before. Washington surveying, goes right, kicks it way back out. White, White. Be a long three. He's going to try it. Off the mark. Oh, they're going to give it to the Wolverines with .5 on the clock. They're going to have to catch and shoot it. Gonna, Lopes are going to have to stick like glue. Back to the corner. Jardine, the best three-point shooter off the mark. Shot clock expired. Well, here we go, folks. Two-point Wolverines lead in a very, very up-tempo opening half. The Lopes get a couple at the line. Let's send it down to Kate. Well, Coach, the team started off with such intensity going to the hoop early. How did you see it all play out towards the end of that first half? Well, we weren't very good on this end or down there. I mean, they kept driving us at the beginning, so we went to zone. Uh, they made some shots. We got to do a better job down here keeping out of paint. And down there in the zone, we just got to be able to jump up and make some shots. Laver and Johnson account for 20 of the team's total 29 points in that first half. He had such a balanced attack on Thursday night. What will be your message to the team to bring that back in the second half? Well, we got to continue to move the ball. They're going to be a zone. Again, there's only a limited thing you can do in the zone. So we got to swing the ball, get it in the middle, and then make shots. I got to ask real quick, you coming back in the suit? I don't know yet. We shall see. Is Dan Marley superstitious? You're going to want to stay with us to see how Dan Marley will dress for the team while the heat is on. GCU trailing by two to Utah Valley. We will continue to bring you live coverage here from GCU Arena with our Lopes Halftime Show right here on Fox 10 Extra. We'll be right back. When it comes to school spirit, we do it best. Lopes up. Afghanistan. 
Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP, delivering water and power. DCU, they give you the tools to find what your purpose truly is. My name is Joseph, and I'm earning my Bachelor of Arts degree at GCU. There's the thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Welcome back, bringing you Lopes coverage here on Fox 10 Extra. I'm Kate Longworth. Well, it was a high intensity first half. GCU trailing Utah Valley in the first half, 32 30 to score right now, and a high flying halftime act right behind me with the Russian Bar Trio. Well, we have seen Javon Blackshear really step up his play on the court, really making a seamless transition the freshman has done. He grew up in Oakland, California, now playing here with the Lopes. Not only making things happen on the court, but also in the classroom. We check in right now with GCU student reporter Montana to get her thoughts on not only what Javon is doing here, but also other student athletes. set on more than just the sport itself. They excel not only on the court, but in the classroom and within the community. These are your December Student Athletes of the Month. I was waiting for this moment for a long time. We're kicking off Student Athlete of the Month with the man of men's basketball, Javon Blackshear. Javon, you managed a 3.2 GPA this semester while being in your first season of collegiate basketball. Where do you think your GPA ranks compared to your teammates? Uh, I think I'm top, top dog. How did you do it? Hard work, <laughs> going to class every day, uh, paying attention. As a kid, you were constantly featured on the Ball is Life media accounts that has multi-millions of followers. Tell me about that. As a kid, we used to watch other people on Ball is Life and to see ourselves on there is a dream come true and the kids look up to us now, so we just want to inspire and get better every day. Being where you are now and going through everything that you've gone through, what advice would you give to those who look up to you? Stay solid and be yourself and never give up. Um, everybody goes through obstacles as a part of life. You just got to work through them and when you get those obstacles, how you overcome them is, is who you really are. We're here at the pool with Student Athlete of the Month from Women's Swim and Dive, Alyssa Christensen, and we just can't seem to keep her away from the water. You are a double major, managing a 3.8 GPA. I mean, playing collegiate sports themselves is almost a full-time job. How do you manage all of this? To get used to time management and juggling everything, but um, after I got the hang of it, it didn't come too hard. You just got to prioritize. You serve on the WAC Student Athlete Advisory Committee. What kind of responsibility do you have between the conference and GCU? I just gather information from WAC and what's changing within the conference. I just have a lot of uh, leadership roles to take on. Back in November, you came away with two personal wins within one weekend. What is the season looking like as we head into the spring for your team? So we kind of talked as a team. The women think that we could take top three at WAC, so that's our main goal right now, and I think we're on our way to doing that. We just have to keep working hard in the pool and supporting each other and motivating each other to do better every day. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. Student Athlete of the Month for December, a huge accomplishment. Congratulations Thank again. Thank you. All right, once again, uh, taking a look at the Russian Bar Trio, making the crowd here at GCU Arena cheer. 
with their impressive act. And now can the Lopes basketball team follow with the same? Right now they trail by two. What will Dan Marley bring for the next half? We'll find out. But first, our Lopes halftime show continues right after this with Barry and Scott. State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. Whether you crave the night or savor the day, here we give you all a place to play. Talking Stick Resort, play in style. Performance is your profession. You excel in bringing the best out of people and teams to discover their true potential, but you strive to take the next step in your career. GCU's PhD in Performance Psychology online degree program gives you the tools you need to elevate your performance to the next level and do it all within your tight schedule. When human excellence meets cutting edge technology, business advances. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. It's halftime in Phoenix. The Wolverines on top of the Lopes, 32 to 30. Barry Bittell alongside Scott Williams and Kate Longworth here from GC Arena in Phoenix in a uh, up-tempo opening half and then kind of got a little chilly there for the Lopes, but then it got a little chilly for the Wolverines near the end as well. Yeah, both teams started out shooting about 60% yeah. in this basketball game and, you know, Lopes finished under 40 and the Lopes pick it up defensively. Utah Valley's just at 43%. Let's check out our first half highlights brought to you by SRP, delivering water and power. Well, I, I like the way Mike's, Mikey Dixon got the party started right here. This is just a nice, hard, straight line drive, finishing with some contact around the basket. And then Blackshear here, that little floater going to his left side. Labor says, oh, hold on, I want some of this fun too. And he just goes down here, he's so good, this is patient there, that just left, strong, left shoulder turn, that good, smooth right hand hook, and then Jenkins, that bump off the bench is what you've got to have, a guy that can find a way to manufacture some points, push himself right to the front of the basket, and then CJ. Carlos Johnson, he has been playing absolutely fantastic with the Lopes offensively, has become a true leader on the floor. Five, uh, six players uh, in double figures, or six players in scoring tonight already in this game. Commonwealth Insurance brings our first half stats the way insurance should be. Johnson and Labor 20 points, 7 of 13 from the field. The rest of the team 10 points on 3 of 13 shooting. While Isaiah White for the Wolverines came out on fire, 9 points in the first 9 minutes, but at 0 points in the last 11 minutes. One thing I like what the Lopes are doing well is they're getting themselves to the foul line too. They're being aggressive, picking up fouls, knocking down 9 of 11 free throws. Well, there's plenty of fans here at GCU Arena, and they're heading into the Lopes shop. Look at all of that sweet gear. Stop on out. Lopes back in town February 13th. Kate will be back with just a moment. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes! When it comes to school spirit, we do it best. Lopes up. Lopes up. Lopes up. Lopes up from Afghanistan.
Welcome back. We hope you're hungry for more Lopes action coming your way on Fox 10 Extra. Right now, it's a two-point game between GCU and the Wolverines. And if you're hungry, well, then you'll like this first half leading scores brought to you by the Streets of New York Pizza. Leading the way for all scores, TJ Washington checking in for Utah Valley with 11, and Carlos Johnson leading the way for the Lopes also with 11. Now, Johnson and Labor. Uh, are accounting for 20 of GCU's 20 or 30 points rather in the first half. However, six different Lopes players have scored so far. Will they continue to bring a balanced attack in the second half and bring that same intensity we saw start off the action tonight at GCU Arena? Well, only time will tell, but the good news is you don't have to wait for long. We're going to take a quick break right here, and then we'll be back with more action coming your way. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA, get your insurance quote today. Across the green desert To where the mountains touch the sky This is Sanderson Ford country Where Arizona's pride Sanderson Ford country Built on serving you Sanderson Ford Satisfaction in everything we do We're Arizona's pride Sanderson Ford When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. The Lopes trail the Wolverines by two. Uh, moments away from the start of the second half. Carlos Johnson, big 11 points in the opening half. Yeah, CJ has been on a tear offensively. The team was really struggling. They were looking for somebody to step up and become a leader. He decided it's really not his nature, but he has taken upon himself. Now he's been an offensively minded player. But it's a different way about the way he's going about scoring now. It has become a leadership type of player. And then big fella underneath. Can't say enough about his inside game. Ability to be able to go out and stroke the outside ball. Gets on the glass for extra offensive possessions as well. Laver and Johnson, 20 points. The rest of the team with 10 here in the opening half. As you see head coach Dan Marley getting his team prepared for the Opening tip of the second half, our watch and win night tonight. And we have a winner, Lori Raditz from Boulder, Colorado. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Been to Boulder? I like Boulder. Boulder's nice. Uh -huh. You ever been to Orm? Orm? Oh, you did. You been, said, yeah, been you said you've been to Orm. Yep. I don't know anything about Orm. I was surrounded. Yeah, I like Salt, Salt Lake. Lake. I like Salt Lake. But I, every time I think of Salt Lake, I think of stalking them alone. Oh. Me trying to run around chasing, yeah. chasing Carl Malone. <laughs> His arms were bigger than my legs. <laughs> that, dude, that dude was scary. If my rookie year, I had to go out and face them out there, man. I was, my knees were shaking. <laughs> my teammates are laughing at me. <laughs> Utah, Arizona, part of a beautiful southwest here in the United States. So here we go. Lopes fans remain on their feet until the home team hits their first bucket. White inbounds to Averett. Washington back to White. Looking to turn. Jardine gets the lucky bounce. So Al Fortuitous bounce. They cut that zone defense right in half. Got that ball to the letters in that heart of that zone defense. And it was an easy six foot hook from there. Blackshear to Dixon. Labor, he's got an open shot. Oh, doesn't go. Loose ball. Blackshear's on it. Floaters. Return to center. Away. Yeah. 
Ah. He, Blackshear, nice job getting on that offensive board, but those are some long bodies inside. Yep. Two looks at it from Ola Japoki, and he can't put it home. Four point, Utah Valley lead. Pace is just as frenetic as the opening half. Johnson's three doesn't go. And they had back-to-back -back games where they were hitting a 50% clip from the arc in the last couple of games. They got to get out of this 2-3 zone yeah, it's here. Working. It's too much of a gap right in the center of that 2-3. The 1-2-2 two, two was work looked a little bit better in the first half. The 2-3 is getting diced and sliced. Labor. Marley not happy. Okpo, Johnson, back to Blackshear. 12 on the shot clock. Johnson again, shutting it down. Trying to look for a seam. Blackshear in the paint, kicks out, and White picks it off. White trying to take it, loses the ball. Still has time for recovery and draws the foul. Well, that was a little unfortunate there. They got the, they got the steal, and White's a lot faster in a foot race than Labor. But where are the rest of my White Sharks hustling back? And, and man had a chance to lose the ball, still get back, regain control, and then go back up with the shot. He should have been swarmed by a number of more additional White Sharks by that point. Talked about hustle as a skill. It, 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 it's flat out a skill. If you go out there and you practice the same way, and you play the same way, it becomes second nature to you. Turn the ball over, you don't wait, you don't hop, you burst back to the other end, you get back and help your teammates. Lead is seven. Quickly, in these early parts of the second half, Wolverines coming out on fire. Johnson looking to drive, little floater. That goes. Oh, that ball had to hit the backboard and climb up over the rim. He shot it about nine feet, ten inches, and had to crawl the rest of the two inches up to get over the top of the back, the basket. Olajapoki, near side, Washington, in front of the Wolverines bench, bounce pass. Cody looks to drive baseline, a little underhand. That doesn't go, but it was a nice move. Nice job, Labor down there battling the bigs on the boards. His own defense has slowed the, the lopes down. Yep. They, they were rolling. They, they talked about that 20 points in nine and a half minutes, and then his, his own defense, they hadn't been able to figure it out. Oh, Paul with the feed from Labor. Figured it out off of his shoelaces. Figured it out just fine on that one. Got the ball into Labor, a little high-low action. White shot. Labor went up and grabbed it. I'll tell you what, Labor snatching this ball off the board of the, like a bear grabbing a trout in the street. Just two hands and boom, that's mine. I own this. Seven rebounds. Johnson doesn't go. Pulled down by Jardine. Blackshear tried to sneak in there. Average drives. Underneath. Lopes ball. Everett's like, hey. Where's the body contact foul? <laughs> He's looking at this officially. I wanted to get some, but look at this one more time here. Beautiful pass down there. Labor drops down, gets low, skims it across the floor, and the, po the human pogo stick. Bryce Oakpo just goes up and two hand flushes him. Great to see Oakpo out here working before this game, long before it even started. Labor inside. Oh, Oakpo covered. Long distance shot, Jackson! Well, they're playing through Labor in the middle. As he's not dishing to his bigs down low. He's finding his littles out there on the perimeter. And knock. That's a nice job by Dixon to knock that one down. 7-0 run for the looks. Oh, big pass underneath. Ola Japoki puts it home. Tell you what, EO, he didn't get it clean, but he stayed with the play. Blackshear. Lead is two. I like this Mad City bunch. I'll tell you what, yep. they play hard. Labor, turn around. Oh! Ola Japoki, another block. Uh -huh. Sixth in the nation, he's got four. Yeah, they, they, they get five and a half a game. 
Oh, Jardine. 40% from the arc, but he takes it to the hole. Nice drive. Mm -hmm. Top of the key, a little hop, Euro step, and then skips it right off the glass. And the Laver. Down low, Oppo. Back to Laver. All the Japokis there, but off the glass. Oh, Laver just put his left shoulder in him and said, you might block my shot when I don't hit when there's some space between us, but if I just go right up through your chest, you got no chance. 11.7 rebounds for Alessandro Labor. Man, both of these teams are going to be uh, a little tired after this one because this pace is crazy. How about Mikey Dixon? Well, I, I just love the action, the inside action, figuring out a way to get that ball inside against the zone, and then you kick one down low, so everyone went right back down to Bryce Oppo, and then this one, you kick back out. Mikey Dixon, nobody within 10 feet of him. The pace is crazy. It was crazy against Seattle University as well. Kate Longworth has more on some wardrobe changes. Yeah, perhaps the intensity is still the same, but maybe the AC just a little bit cooler tonight or the right undershirts being worn. I'm not really sure what's going on. However, the other night, this is what happened. First half, Dan Marley, well, it got a little hot in here. He was a little bit sweaty, so second half, he said he just had to go to the polo. Looked pretty good, right? And uh, he had a little fun. They were very proud. He came out in the polo. That's what coaches are supposed to wear courtside, right? <laughs> well, not tonight. He's back in the suit, and we were wondering if he's a little superstitious after the victory on Thursday night when he come back in the polo. He had a fun laugh with that, but I guess, guys, he's not superstitious. It's all about what you do on the court, right? He doesn't need a polo to get the victory tonight. At no. least that's what he's hoping. Great right, coaches. You gotta love uh, Jim Hayford. Very intense on Thursday night. Mark Madsen taking over for Mark Pope. Hey, Another great, great uh, hire by a WAC school. They got Billy Donlin uh, doing a great job at KC and Coach Barnes at Bakersfield, uh, Chris Jans at New Mexico State. There's some really good coaches in this conference. It really is, and it's picking up. I was trying to get, I, I, I like Mark Madsen, what he's done. Coach Marlin was talking, you know, in the pregame show about him as well. He's paid his dues and earned this opportunity. And uh, he's got his team playing hard. Tell you what, I'm, I'm the greatest I'm dancer. Up here sweat. I'm, yeah, no, no, he got some work on his, his <laughs> dance move, most definitely. You're sweating up here? I'm sweating up here. I have valley fever, you know. I, uh, I'm sweating. I'm the only guy that gained weight and he got That's valley tragic. fever. I might That's have to right. take this jacket off and put on one of those State 48 shirts. Oh, that would be nice. I got one in my backpack. You gave me one, partner. That's right. They look sweet. Average. Near side, long three, wow! That was deep. Beyond <laughs> NBA. Yeah, these guys aren't afraid to shoot four or five feet out there behind that three-point line. Watch here, far side, Dixon gives it back. He's got Johnson to his left, motions him in. Tries to free him up. Oh, he lost it, Averitt picked it off, loose ball. Johnson picks it up. Johnson, the Lopes have the numbers. Labor, oh, it's Ola Japoki. Wasn't clean, apparently. Uh, I'll tell you what, I, I just think we got a little uh, bit, of, bit of a call right here. Did we? But it, it's always the player that goes hard and aggressive oh. to the bucket. Right See, in the face, maybe? that's what you're going to get. You go up there soft, Ooh. you're not going to get that call. You're going to try to go underhand, the refs are going to let them block that all day. But he went in there to try to jam it. And that's what it takes sometimes to get that call. Even if it was a clean block, it looks like a foul. 14.27 to go. The officials getting it together. Under 16 break. We'll be right back. Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP, delivering water and power. This Waste Management Phoenix Open will finally be his.
GCU men's basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play at a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. And by SRP, delivering water and power. Beautiful evening in Phoenix on the campus of Grand Canyon University. The ever-growing campus of GCU. Well over 200 acres right in West Phoenix. Great crowd hey. on hand. That's your daughter, isn't it? I believe that might Wasn't be it? some relation, <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's cute. She must have got it from her mama. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about that. <laughs> As Laver goes to the line. GCU right here, and Labor's perfect opportunity to dip into that lead, a sure free throw shooter, and then get back, get set defensively, dig deep and get a stop. Lopes have been able to get down to a single possession on multiple occasions here. They just haven't been able to get that stop. Tight game here in Phoenix. Wolverines, two and four. The Lopes, three and two in conference play. I like this little matchup they got going on here. A lot of switching one through three. Oh, oh no! Underneath. Great pass. Overton. Much like Mikey, uh, excuse me. Yeah, Mikey Dixon made a great pass earlier in the first half. That was a nice pass as well, finding the weak side. Offensive teammate in the labor. Back to Dixon. Stops. He's beyond the arc. Ooh, rings out. Labor got the left hand and the nut. Turn around and a hoop and a five. The labor is just saying, I got more kilos than EO, and I'm just going to push him right up underneath this basket or as close to it as I can. And then before he can react and try to block my shot again. Bread and butter move, left shoulder turn, right hand, silky smooth jumper with the contact. Oh, I like to see the grit. With Laver. Uh, we're, seeing boards. Some, we're seeing some really good play out of Alessandro Laver. Even his yeah. freshman year, we just lit the whack on fire and scoring 25 and 30 point games almost nightly. Yep. Well, that's what he's gotten back to this mentality during the stretch of the last three to four basketball games. And he's just saying, there's no way I shouldn't get at least 15 to 18 points just lacing my shoes. He's not in foul trouble either. Oh, my goodness, another? Come on. Oh, 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 oh. He doesn't even care where the stripe is. Was that Washington? He's yeah. just showing off now at he this is. point. He's out Show here off. shooting them where the Curry shoot from. Wow, 17 points, three of six from behind the arc. Laver. Big right hand and some fortuitous bounce off the back of the rim. Three point lead. Washington puts the wheels on, kind of lost a little bit, but Dixon's going to be called. Well, he, he's a smart player, senior guard, understands if I just make a three, their coach is yelling at him to get out on me. So next time I have an opportunity on the offensive end, when I know they're going to play me tight, I'm just going to use my jets and take it to the basket. Very crafty, very smart play. Doesn't hesitate. From the archer at the line. Tulsa, Oklahoma native. Transfer from Coffeeville Community College. Four-point Utah Valley lead. Back to Labor. Labor moves left. Ooh, foul. Looks like Woodbury. Third team foul in Utah Valley. So unlike the first half when they were racking up the fouls, they've done a better job here in the second half staying out of foul trouble. Johnson to Blackshear. 
Washington. Out of bounds. Yeah, he's... <laughs> this is a tough matchup for the young freshman. He got this very smart, crafty senior guard. Quick and can shoot the ball from the outside. And he's tough defensively as well. Like ever ready bunny, man. But this is great experience for Blackshear to be able to get this in, in such a in his freshman season. Dixon, Jenkins comes back. Up top. Cuts in. Looks to go right hand. Oh, it doesn't go. Labor's there. Labor puts it back. Alessandro Labor's bought some real estate down there. Yeah, he, he is just breaking the glass. He is all over that glass, putting that seven foot, 240 pound frame up against the glass. He's got 18 points and nine boards. Oh, he heaves it up again. <laughs> just thought that one was going to go in. He, he says, hey, I was fouled. I don't miss shots. Only ones I miss is because they hit me. me. Oh, loose ball. Johnson got. In trouble in traffic. Overton fouled by Jenkins. 11.53 to go. Two point Utah Valley lead. We'll step aside. It's a dance party. GCU. We'll have more about that in just a moment. You use the latest technology to treat patients, but your care and compassion is timeless. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Utah Valley on top 50 48 and at the helm of the Wolverines is Mark Madsen former standout at Stanford and also a star with the Lakers uh, not just for how he contributed on the court during their championship run in 2001 and 2002 but how about the way he celebrated in those victory parades just let loose he doesn't mind what's going on around him no shame in his game he was having fun the crowd loved it and now, well, he's not only known for what he's doing at Utah Valley, but Mad Dog, known for his mad skills. And guys, I wish we could get a camera on you right now because I want to see if you have skills like that. <laughs> that doesn't take much. Just move on the one and the three. I, I know it's actually kind of hard to move on one and three. I don't know what he's doing, but Kobe, Kobe's, Kobe is cracking up in the background. <laughs> he didn't care. He's got two. Rings, right? <laughs> Wonder how you danced <laughs> three times. <laughs> That's great. Huh? Who, who was the bad dancer in your? Uh, well, your I don't two? think we had anybody that bad. So he <laughs> he definitely would win the award for any championship parade celebration. I'm I'm, I'm sure. Well, he doesn't uh, care one lick. He was he was on top of the world. Yep. Good for him. So those parties are pretty fun, I would imagine. You went to three of them yourself. Yeah, it, it, it really is kind of hard to put into to words uh, the feelings you experience. But um, safe to say it's one of the best moments of my life. I sure. bet, I bet. Oh, the lead remains two for Utah Valley. Up high, Carlos Johnson! This game is tied and it's erupted here. Well, beautiful play design by Coach Marley and great execution by his team. Brown with a strike. The hit. Brown hadn't done a whole lot offensively, but boy, was that a precision pass. Inside, Morley working on Labor. Off the glass and in. Uh, just tricked Labor. Labor yeah, thought he got away with the travel, but he did a nice job taking his time down there as Labor was pressing him and found a way to sneak past him. Gets the bucket. We weren't tied for long. Love to see that coming out of the break. The Lopes execute. Blackshear puts it down. Kick back out. Brown down baseline. Jenkins back out to Brown. Brown to Blackshear. Ball movement is quick. Johnson trying to wheel around, but he's fouled by Overton. 
Well, if you can swing that ball from Saul, look at this replay one more time. He put a little extra sauce on that one, too. He didn't just dunk it. He caught it, then put a little sauce on it right there and oh, I see slammed the it down, slapping the backboard with the left hand. Oh, wow, my goodness. That was beautiful. Laver and Johnson, 35 of the team's 50 points. Blackshear drives. Blackshear kicks out Laver all day. Big rebound. Jenkins went up and got it. Lorenzo. Whoops, ball out of bounds. 17 on the shot clock. You can just put one of those minute work signs down there underneath the basket for the loaf because Jenkins and Laver are just beasting them on the offensive boards right now. I mean, seven offensive rebounds for the Lopes under, underneath the paint. All of them coming here in the second half. Johnson. Oh, White's called, huh? Oh, they went in. No, 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 no. The official said no. Wipes it off. Oh, you got to count that said, basket. Come on. Oh, they don't know. He's not happy uh, with the zebra right now. <laughs> they said, hey, he's in the act of shooting when you blew that whistle. He wouldn't have waved it off. It was a Kobe Bryant shot. <laughs> Can't get some black cheer. Mamba would have been in his face, too. Mamba would have been right yeah, up in his LeBron face. Pass hey, the Mamba? Did he pass him? I don't know. Labor, long distance. Oh, he just can't hit it. But hello! That's got to be a foul. <laughs> Jenkins. Look at this one more time. Labor shoots the outside shot. Jenkins just says, I'm going to get to the weak side glass. Ooh, yeah, you can try to box me out, but I'm just too big, too strong. I'm going to get the ball anyway. 16 fouls. Now the Lopes are going to be shooting free throws. The rest of us have with each. Utah Valley foul. Woodbury out. Jardine back in. Johnson. Blackshear. Tied by Everett. Johnson trying to free himself up. White's going to be called. Oh, no, that's the seven. Three. Three on White. Uh, yeah. Three fouls on White. Seven team yeah. foul. Carlos Johnson's going to go to the line, line with a chance to tie this basketball game. That's so just awesome. all these extra possessions just put so much pressure down here in Utah Valley. They're cracked. And now the Lopes are in the, in the bonus situation. Remember they just had three fouls? We were saying both yeah, teams yeah. staying out of trouble. Well, in two minutes, they've picked up four fouls. Oh, man, the Habits student body here at GC have come out strong tonight. This season, the Cardiac Lopes, five games, five points or less, three and two record. Not good for old guys like myself. <laughs> 13 of 15, free throws, 87%. Thank you. I didn't jinx it. I keep an eye on Washington. You know Washington wants to keep, penetrate that basketball and either do it himself or find a shooter. Penetrate or hit a three. Washington looks to penetrate. Oh, did they get labor? I'm not sure who. Yeah, they got labor down there. And, and, and it's... Not Laver's fault. Don't He's got a steady, left arm? well, he got a steady stream of guys driving that ball down there and dropping it off to somebody right around the basket or driving it in themselves and put a lot of pressure on the back line of the defense. Washington season average 13.3. He's got 19. 19 looking for 20. Yeah. His career high is 25. That was pretty close. Some guys just get fired up playing here. Yeah, now, you know, some people, they, they shrink by the crowd noise of the habits. And some people love to rise to the right. challenge and try Put to quiet the crowd. Yeah, sure. That, that, uh, Washington's got a lot of that. He's like, I, I want to try to quiet that crowd. Blackshear, labor, a lot of traffic. Blackshear, oh, look at that. Chick -chick That's beautiful. Oh, I'm going to give it to you, then I'm going to go to the basket. And you give it back to me, and I'll lay it in. Huh. Well, you love the freshman. It's really something. Washington, if that went in, I mean, he just threw it up there. Right? Yeah, he's having it's a been night. going in all night. He's having a night. Mark Madsen's not going to stop him. He knows he's got a guy out there hot as fish grease right now. He's going to let him do whatever he wants. Labor underneath Johnson. Oh, White again. White again. He's got four. Their leading scorer and rebounder. They're playing through Labor in the middle. He's doing a fantastic job. He just looks off 
Oh, did I take that thing? That's the previous play where he dishes at the give and go. This time he, oh, then he, second time, okay, thing. And then the next time he comes back and he sees uh, Carlos Johnson down there and this drops it back underneath to him. Carlos Johnson, he's getting his rhythm from the free throw line. I oh. didn't even, the words were still forming on my on, lips. Yeah. So I'm not going to take any responsibility for that miss. No, I don't think you should. I thought he was getting himself into a nice rhythm from the line and was going to knock these two down. But still a chance to give the Lopes the lead back, which it seems like it's been forever since they've had. There you go. Lopes on top by one. Overton in for White. Their leading scorer and rebounder takes a seat with four personal fouls. Their last lead for the Lopes was 25-24. Wolverines went on an 11-1 run in the opening half. They open it up. The Lopes have stormed back. It goes toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Oh, that's a nice move to the left. Yeah, see, see, that's where the young Indeed. fellow's going to realize, listen, I'm, I'm at a mismatch down here, at a disadvantage. i got to take away the baseline because my help's going to come from the middle. I can't let him spin back away where there's no help coming from. Labor was on his horse trying to get there, but the young fellow just let him go the wrong direction. Jenkins for three. Big rebound. Lopes back off. Everett. Everett stops beyond the arc. Looking to move. That's the top of the key. Kick back out to Washington. Better shut that spacing down on, on him as he looks to free up. Back out. Overton. Oh, he traveled. Oh, he did travel. Yeah, I thought the referee wasn't going to call him. It took him a half a second, but he was right on top of it. Right call. Yep. Madsen knows it. No complaints. Jenkins inbound. 8.24 to go. Utah Valley up by one. Blackshear moves right. Everett looking at him. Oh, little oh, no. See, the moving. official didn't see it. The official right in front of it yeah. saw the whole play. Yeah. The weak side of the official, uh, it's not his call to make. It's the same guy. He's way far away. Yeah, that, 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 that shouldn't even be allowed to be able to be called when you have an official right. two feet away. You're right. didn't call him. You're right. And then, then and that, that it's part of the game. You got to learn to play through bad calls. Yep. You know, the Lopes right now down one, they get bad, the tough end of a bad call. Now they got to keep their composure and continue to play. Can't let it change the way they got the momentum of this game right now. Everett takes it. Nice drive baseline for the Wolverines. Well, I'll tell you what, these guards, yep, Everett in Washington, just too quick for the Lopes. They cannot keep them on the perimeter. Back to three, the lead for the Wolverines. Brown, look to Jenkins inside, he'll find Dixon, he drives baseline. Kicked out, heavy traffic, got the ball stripped away. Washington up for Overton. Overton labors there, but he puts it in off the glass. Johnson takes the ball, five point Wolverines lead. Coaching seven and a half to go, 6-0 run for Utah Valley. Johnson off the glass, too heavy, loose ball. Picked up there by Morley, brings it up. Washington peels back out. I feel if the Lopes can't get a stop here, Coach Marley's got to get a timeout and settle his team down. Beyond the arc, Everett looking to drive. Johnson stops, little floater. Johnson had to recover. Seven minutes and counting. Brown. Up top. Moves near side. Looks for labor. He's guarded heavily. Jenkins back to Brown. Brown trying desperately. Takes the shot. And good! I don't need the pass! The shoot! A nice job and a good time for it. Brown, who hasn't done a whole lot tonight as we talked about, knocks down a big three-pointer there. Overton in for White. Overton drives, takes it in off the glass. Right by Carlos Johnson. A well, flash over to him. The zone wasn't working. The man-to-man -man defense not working either. These guys are quick. Five-point lead. Brown near side. Dixon. Jenkins comes out. Up over the top to Labor. Yeah, Foul. Nice job. Passing the ball to the corner of the backboard where Labor can hold his guy and go get it. 
Defenders got to hold them to prevent the easy two. 62-57 is the Utah Valley lead. As the Lopes took a one-point lead, their first one since 25-24, but the Wolverines come right back. I'll tell you what, they're tough. They are tough. And, and when the chips start going against them a little bit there, they went right back to their bread and butter, which is driving that ball hard to the basket, found some success inside. Well, one guy that has found success tonight is Alessandro Laver down low. Yeah, Laver's been an absolute beast. He knocked down a couple shots early from the outside, but he's done most of his job on the offensive glass and around the basket. And some of these big offensive back uh, glass rebounds and putbacks, uh, getting those extra possession for the Lopes after some misses been fantastic when the Lopes really needed them. Doing a decent job defensively uh, as as well against some of those bigs. That, that, that's the one I like right there because that's just a hustle play saying I'm going to outwork you and get to the front of the basket but Laver and Johnson tonight 38 points and 15 boards. Laver sixth 20 point game of the season 18th of his career and a sweet alley-oop out of a timeout here in the second half. I love that one right there. It, he was round that pass that one over to Carlos Johnson. He puts a little super sauce on it and got the Lopes off and going there. And, I mean, they're right in this basketball game. They're down five, but like you say, they're they're good and close. They're good in games that decided by five points plus. Eleven ties, nine lead changes between the Lopes and the Wolverines. It's Madsen for the Wolverines, Marley for the Lopes. Let's see which team responds after this timeout. 6.08 on the clock. Lopes travel out on the road. They return back here February 13th. Hope to see you at GC Arena. You know, the Utah Valley had a game at Kentucky earlier in this season, and they were down double figures and stormed back, cut the lead to or the deficit rather to one, uh, two and a half minutes to go before finally falling, falling behind and for good. But there's no quit in this team, so not surprised when they lost the lead tonight that they found a way to fight back and, and get another five point lead. But got one of the Lopes better free throw shooters at the free throw line. Utah Valley has played 11 games decided by six points or less. They've won only three of those games. Oh, unfortunately, Laver could not get that one and one to go down. Jardine hands it off to Overton. Overton holding his own with White on the bench. Olajapoki back out. Washington heaves up a long three again. This kid cannot miss. Yeah, he got it going, and I know Blackshear's thinking there's no way he's going to shoot it from a letter on the floor, but yet that's where he shoots it from. He's four for eight. Six of those have come from either the G or the U, or just right next door to it. Bill advised pass by Jenkins. Oh, he's so good at throwing that high pass earlier. Put a little bit more air under it. Let that big fella just hold him off and go get it. Hope's back down eight. Maverick. Up over the top to Ola Japoki, fouled by Labor. Well, I don't want to say I called it, but there was a play earlier where Blackshear got whistled for an offensive foul. He turned the basketball over and was saying that it was a bad call for the weak side official. You can't let plays like that rally. It seems like it rattled the Lopes, and Utah Valley capitalized on it. They went from up one to down by eight. Lujapoki at the line. A lot of time left in this game. Lopes don't have to do anything crazy here. Go back to what was what you were doing to get the lead, get some good interior passing, and crash that offensive blast for second chance opportunities. Don't start hooking up threes. Johnson, back out, Labor, near side, drives, loses the handle, does Mikey Dixon. Washington on the run. Yeah, bad time for a turnover. 
Back to Washington. Oh, he was going to heave it up. Back out. Jardine. Averitt. Madsen. Yeah, Madsen wants to run a little clock Takes here. Get something good. Realizing he's got himself a nine-point lead. Wants to make sure he doesn't get a, a turnover that can lead to an easy GCU basket. Overton drives up over the top. Loose ball picked up by Oak Paul. Nice job by Labor. Just a wall down there. Lockshear. Kicks out to Johnson. How about a three? Not there. Rebound. Averett. Lopes can't hit a big bucket here. Yeah, closing in on four minutes to go. Well, so you got a turnover lethal. inside and then a three-pointer from the outside. Go back inside for some buckets. Jardine leaves for Overton. Back way out to Washington. You going to shoot from here? Yeah, not this early. Yeah. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Pardon me. I, I couldn't believe it. I said there's no way he's going to shoot it from there, but there were seven seconds on the shot clock, and he still launched it. Laver, he's got looked, but he gives it off to Johnson. Johnson drives, stops, a little floater. Oh, it didn't crawl up over the top. Lopes just can't get a bucket here. They've gone cold, and I thought Charles Johnson got in there and got enough body contact where he might get a whistle. Four turns in the last 552 and counting. The drought is 315 and counting. Overton, Jardine, Averett, near side. Comes back out top, looking to move on Oak Ball. Back out, Overton. Overton, high by Blackshear, moves left, stops, pops. In and out, didn't get a call, he wanted it. All Blackshear. Right. Got to have a bucket here, three minutes to go. Driving, no call. Rebound, there's a call. Looks like Ola Japoki. Uh, Labor's out of gas. Carlos Johnson's out of glass. This is a good time for timeout. 2.54 on the clock. Wolverine 66. Lopes 57. We'll be back with more here from GCU Arena. You have a foundation of strong values. You belong where your passions come to life. Grand Canyon University's online degree program in cybersecurity makes it convenient for you to join the newest front in keeping your community safe. GCU teaches you how to secure and protect a virtual environment. Join the growing field of cybersecurity. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Down 66 57 to the Wolverines, 254 to go. This is the conclusion of a two game homestand. Folks back onto the road. Michael Potter on the right, Paul Coral on the left. We'll have all the action on 1580 The Fanatic, 99.3 FM or 95.9 FM at UTRGV next Thursday, 6 p.m. Then it's off to New Mexico State and California Baptist. So the break before our next telecast is Thursday, February 13th when the Lopes. Host Kansas City. They will have the pregame at 6:30. The career high rebounds for Alessandro Labor, 13 boards. Well, he had a previous high of 11 at New Mexico this year. Shooting in the second half, UVU 59%, the Lopes 39%. Yeah, it, a lot of those have uh, led by drives to the basket, and they haven't gotten them, but they've gotten either a tip or offensive rebound, so maybe they've gotten more shots. They just haven't gotten more shots to fall. Oppo, if you ever need to get two free throws, it's right here, big man. For every three-point shot the Lopes make, Canyon State credit you do make a donation to the students, inspiring student scholarship. For more information, go to giving.gcu.edu. Well, that did not go the Lopes way. Now, he went 0 for 2, and unfortunately, Labor got a foul, and that's going to send now the Wolverines to the 
free throw line as that's the seventh team foul on the Lopes. Back in the ball game for the Lopes, number 13, Lorenzo Jenkins. Emmanuel Olechapoki to shoot the one to one. Ochapoki, he's back at the free throw line where he just made one and two. Nice stroke for a big man. That looks good anyway. I don't know what his, field, his free throw percentage is on the season, but that's a fairly good looking 60 stroke for a shot in. blocker. Coming into the game, Ola Japoki was just 14 blocks shy of breaking the all-time Utah Valley record for blocks. Set at 72 by Menyang. Remember him? Oh, yeah. Waver for three. Oh, man. Oh, they've gone cold. Yep. That's unfortunate. This was a really good basketball game. We thought it was going to come down to the wire, but it was 11-point deficit with two and a half minutes to go. And the Lopes unable to find anything close to around the basket. Utah Valley sporting a 14 to 12 run here in the closing stretches of this basketball game. Excuse me, 14 to 2, not 14 to 12. They wish it was 14 to 12. Yeah. Jardine, twisting, turning, short. Blackshear comes in. Stops. Johnson, tied by Washington. Looking to free him up. Johnson off the glass. He's fouled. Well, nice job by Carlos Johnson, not settling for the for the perimeter shot. I like when a guy drives in there, says, you know, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna try to get a bucket and score with the game clock stopped. Jardine second. There's about it. Yeah, early last year where Johnson was really struggling from the free throw line where he would almost decide, I'd rather take the shot rather than have the pressure of going to the free throw line. And now I know he's really maturing as a basketball player because he's got confidence that if I do get fouled in there, I know I can go to the free throw line and make my free throws. Except for that. Labor and Jenkins take a seat. Okpo, out with Brown. I like this pressure here. Lopes got into a game earlier in the season with some pressure in the backcourt, and they forced a the turnover. They bring Waver and Jenkins right back. Yeah, so they a little Good offensive move. defense substitutions here. Bring the little guys out here to pressure that ball, that zone trap, and then as soon as they get the turnover, bring your offensive players back in on the offensive end and try to get them some more points. Blackshear, turn around, Dixon. Oh, yes! Timeout on the floor. And Coach Marley takes another timeout so he can do the same thing again. I'm going to get my big back out the floor, set my trap again, see if I can't get another turnover slash three-pointer. Love this right here. Big screen by Labor. And he knocks it down. Like that right there. Mikey Dixon, no hesitation. Labor set a couple man size screens to free some of his teammates tonight. I wish those would show up in the box score in some way. You know how many times I would have led the team in Chicago and Milwaukee setting screens for Jordan and Ray Allen, just crushing their defenders so they could get an extra second to knock down a shot or drive to the lane? But no. Really put him on the map, that Jordan guy. He's nothing without me. I, I told you that, I right? Know, I know. I launched yeah. his career. When I first I got yeah. to Chicago, he was known for scoring a little bit. But until I got there, exactly. he never won, won the big, you know, the big thing. Yeah, I've championship. seen all the video. I've seen all the. Oh, he stepped, stepped out. Oh, my goodness. Labor and Jenkins. Utah Valley starting to come unglued here in the house of Havoc. All oh, that Lopes are loving it. Little. Uh, Will they run that Energy same burst. play again? It worked the first time. They'll run it the same way, just the other side. Watch for Dixon coming off a screen by Labor, shooting the three. This time Jenkins finds Dixon. Dixon stops inside the arc. Foul! Foul! Hoop and a horn! Oh, oh my oh. goodness! Is that a two or a three? The officials aren't sure. I think it's a two. They gave him a two, yeah, and they're going to sit him to the line for one more. Look at that one more time. That great concentration by Mikey Dixon. Coming up big, five points here in a matter of about six seconds. Make it six 
points. I'll tell you what, Carlos Johnson would hit those two free throws. He had a one possession game right now. They pull back out there, the press, they get through it. Jardine, White's in the game with four personal fouls. Ola Chapoki lost oh, it. Oh, jump ball. Jump ball. Oh, no, they called no. a foul. Oh, I thought, I thought Diggs. He lost the handle. I thought Blackshear had stolen that ball. Look at this, one more time here on the baseline. Does Blackshear go down and get this clean, or does he get his wrist? Wrist. Got it, yeah, he got his hand, no doubt about it. Good call by the official. Oh, it's deafening in here now. The decibel levels have gone up 10 times. One twenty-nine on the clock, a four-point lead. Misses both. Oh, I was just bragging about his free throw stroke, but it failed him on those two attempts. Can Mikey Dixon do it again? Dixon back to labor. Johnson, top of the key, stops, pops. Good! Wow. First time since February 16 of 2019 at Chicago State. Two players with 20 points for the Loops. Last year it was Finky and Johnson tonight, Labor and Johnson. 1.14 to go. Utah Valley's lead is two. The Lopes on a 9-0 run. They were left for dead on the side of the road, the road kill. And all of a sudden, Coach Marley goes to a little pressure in the backcourt, and Utah Valley has just cracked like walnuts. They can't handle the pressure. Even when they did break the press, the Lopes scrambled back, got sent a player to the free throw line. Havocs did their thing by turning up the volume, le volume level and they missed a couple free throws and come back down and all of a sudden shots that weren't falling are falling like they're just freebies. So Lopes doing a good job clawing back into this thing. Now it's a two point game. There is no reason to foul here. Play this one true, keep them off the free throw line, force them into a tough two and rebound the ball. You saw that run, 9-0 in 46 seconds. But right, Washington has the basketball. And he has been lethal. Browns staring him down. You know he wants to drive right hard to the basket. One minute remaining. I'll just tell you what they're going to do. He's coming off that screen, going to the bucket. Two on him now, pushing him back. Jardine has to gather it. Open man is Overton. This one. Misses it. Put back is good. That's the that's the part I'm talking. The rebound. It's the shot that doesn't kill you. It's that rebound. You got it because you're scrambling out there, trying to just fly at shooters. You got to make sure you get the weak side covered on that glass. Fortunately, low stone. It's, you got a bunch of guys out here running for the ball. Everyone's trying to look for someone to block out, and then there's the big fella right in front of the basket that gets. It. Jardine up over Okpo. Bryce, just not enough. 44.1. Well, that's the great thing. That's a ton of time in college basketball. Looks are out of timeout, but that doesn't matter. You're only down two possessions, and you got 44 seconds to work with. Execution on this offensive play. You take the best shot available that you can get, whether it's a, a drive, a mid-range, or a three. 9-0 run for the Lopes to get him back into this game. Yeah, Dixon making that one, and I love this one here by Carlos Johnson because once you get yourself to the free throw line there with rhythm dribble, that's just muscle memory at that point. Clean look at the basket, not a hand in his face, and he knocked it down. Here we go. 44.1 seconds. The Lopes have yet to break the huddle. They will inbound the basketball. Scott mentioned no timeouts for GCU. One on the board for Madsen and the Wolverines. Jenkins to inbound to Blackshear. Labor, Johnson, and Dixon. Looks like another oh, timeout. Mark Madsen wants to call a timeout. I guess he wanted to see who with the personnel for Lopes was going to be on the floor or how they were lined up and Just he didn't like yeah yeah he said I don't need to take any of these timeouts back to Orm with me I'll go ahead and burn one right here make sure we can 
to the best personnel on the floor and make sure my guys know what they're doing and who to guard. That's him directing a lot of his attention to White. Again, White on the floor, four personal fouls. Overton came in for him and held his own. Washington has led the way with 23 points. Johnson with 21, Labor with 20. And here we go. Blocks you. Brings it up across the center court. Right in front of the Lopes bench. Washington's on him. Looked inside, found Labor. Jardine's on him. Hands it off. Dixon, open for three. Short. Loose ball on the ground. Wolverines. Oh, they got Jenkins with a foul. Down there trying to fight for that ball, and referee says he came over the back of one of the Utah Valley players. At this point, they probably would have taken a ton more time off the clock. The average going to the line. Wolves fans keeping their fingers crossed he's unsuccessful from the charity strike. Yeah, it is still a one and one situation. It's not an automatic two shot foul. So if he happens to miss his first one, still a lot of time for the looks. I'm surprised Coach Barley went and designed that one up for the three there. Because you're down two shots. I, I almost think I like going, you know what, let me get the two, and then I'm going to put the pressure on him again, see if I can get the turnover. I get a turnover where I can get another shot, all of a sudden I get four points just by, because I've got a made field goal. Got a chance to put that pressure on him back. But uh, he decided he knows his team way better than I do. The hot shooter wanted to go for the three point. Never does the job. It's a little heat on Abbott. Dixon, far side. Looking to move. Oh. oh, he found some trouble there off balance. Oh man, I thought his foot was out. Overton. Yeah, it looked like Mikey Dixon's knee buckled or something on down. I thought he had hurt himself. It, uh, he just doesn't get any lift here, right? Oh, he stepped on his oh, right yeah, foot. He, yeah, something happened and his foot slid on the floor on a, on a wet spot, maybe. Unfortunate. Folks couldn't get a bucket on those last two trips down the floor. I mean, hey, listen, they fought back to get this thing down to a two-point game, and they're going to come up a little bit short, but... What an effort. There's no quitting in this basketball club. And I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be writing them off yet. Down six with 17 seconds to go. They, had, they got nine points in 40 seconds. Who knows what might happen? Seven point lead for Utah Valley. Brown's got an open look. He's gonna step back from three and take a shot at God. <laughs> Foul, Johnson commits. A foul on Overton. Foul call number 23, Carlos Johnson, third round. Just one more time. I thought Brown was going to take the layup right here. Yeah. He goes, he just says, okay, I'll just dribble. Okay, no one's going to come get me. I guess I got to get this up. <laughs> and he knocks it down. Ooh, funny play. You would think, okay, I got a two-pointer, but just dribbled right past the basket. Oh, he missed another free throw. And over till it's over. 4 point game. I've seen I've seen crazy things happen. Yep. It's still a two possession game. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was a little off balance. Gets. Dixon throws up the three. Oh, it's off the mark. Oh. What a game. I'll tell you what. The game was, it looked like it was going to be a blowout for Utah Valley there. The folks came back and made it real interesting. Utah Valley wins it 73 to 69. They improved to 3 and 4. Wow, the Lopes dropped to three and three in conference play. We will step aside and be right back here from GCU Arena after we take this time out.
State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. So one key component that makes the Waste Management Phoenix Open so successful is Cox Business. Over 700,000 people are going to come enjoy TPC Scottsdale from digital TV to digital phones to security and most importantly that free Wi-Fi all over this property. We simply couldn't do it without a partner like Cox Business. We're grateful, we're thankful, it's a hole in one. So Utah Valley prevails 73-69 over the Lopes. Some sharp shooting by TJ Washington and uh, a complete team effort by Utah Valley. The Lopes did uh, go on a 9-0 run there late, but they just could not uh, get back into the game. The Lopes a lot of credit for coming back. I misspoke when I said it looked like it was going to be a blowout. It looked like they the Utah Valley was going to win comfortably, yeah. and the Lopes came back and put that pressure on them all of a sudden. It made the game real interesting with those turnovers and missed free throws. And uh, with that one possession game, 40 seconds to play, they just couldn't get that stop, the offensive rebound, and then they couldn't get their footing again. But what a great effort by both ball clubs it tonight. It really was. It was a great basketball game. Congratulations to the Wolverines. They improved to three and four. Our player of the game brought to you by Canyon State Credit Union. Canyon State Credit Union committed to you. It's Alessandra Labor. Labor was fantastic. Uh, first half, second half, he really did a nice job out there. It, he's just so solid with his confidence around the basket. Uh, whether he's getting the ball on the outside, knocking down the outside shot, or using his good footwork uh, down on the blocks. I love that one right there, because it's a little high hand off. And the offensive rebound, 14 boards, a number of those coming on the offensive glass. And this one right here, taking on two Wolverines and just throwing that left shoulder into a bigger body taking that contact and then having the concentration and the skill to finish around the basket with either hand now, right and left hand, just a real tough cover for anybody in the Western Athletic Conference. Yeah, 38 uh, rebounds for the Lopes, 37 for the Wolverines. Carlos Johnson, again, a uh, pretty good night as far as uh, the points are, are uh, credited towards number 23. Yeah, he's just been real aggressive. Yeah, I, I like him going to the basket. I mean, I know he's got that ability to knock down the outside shots, but not a player in this Western Athletic Conference can stop him when he's going to the basket. You know, Washington, uh, he was not nearly the size of Carlos Johnson, but he, he is fearless in taking the ball to the hole as well, and Carlos Johnson is at his best. And he's just in attack mode and uh, looking to score because he realizes that's what his team needs. Somebody go in there and drive that ball right at the heart of the defense. Let's revisit uh, the Sanderson Ford three keys to the game. Well, I love this one right here. This is the Mad Dogs. This, that, that's that dirt work, hard hat, lunch bell type stuff. The second chance opportunities I thought were really big for GCU. That beehive mentality. Everybody's sharing that basketball. Uh, 13 assists tonight. 11 against Seattle was absolutely fantastic. And then just that whole assist, that part of having the charitable spirit out there on the floor. I thought everybody did that tonight. Even when they were down, they were pumping their teammates back up. And that led them to that push, though, where they had that 9-0 run. Upcoming schedule for GCU men's basketball. They traveled away from GCU Arena three straight games. UTRGV January 30th at New Mexico State against the Aggies, the first of the month. And then on the 8th, they're in Riverside against California Baptist before they return here against Kansas City. Remember to tune in to Michael Potter and Paul Coral for all the action on 1580 AM. But that'll do it from here at GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes fall to the Utah Valley Wolverines, 73-69. As I mentioned, please join Michael Potter, Paul Coral, 1580 AM. The Lopes travel to UTRGV, New Mexico State, and California Baptist. Our next telecast Thursday, February 13th, when the Lopes take on KC. But until then, for Gate Longwood, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Beachell, wishing you a wonderful Saturday night.